Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Real Debaters. I'm Michael Petro, your host and one of the debaters on the show. This week, the podcast is supported by the Toad and the Whole Pub and Eatery in Winnipeg, Manitoba. For all of your food, booze, and dancing needs, please check out the Toad. They've got a lovely pub and eatery with a great domestic, local, and imported beer selection. With some really delicious pub-style food. There's the whiskey bar with 200 different types of whiskeys to choose from. And then in the cavern, which is in the basement, that's their live music venue. That's where you can you can dance. I'm sure they're fine if you dance everywhere else, but that's that's where all the live music happens. Uh, so in October, every Tuesday is Soul Night with either The Solutions or Dr. Hot Bottom. Every Thursday is Jam Night with either Jive Town or Squid Squad. And the week of October 11th, on October 11th, is 6 out of 10, Chernobyl Wolves, Your Mom, and Mouthfeel. And October 12th is Sawchuck, The Rules, Cheap Heat, and Mouthfeel again. Uh, this week, in my living room, we are featuring Mark Navarro, Mark Cowell, and Jimmy Skinner. Jimmy was amazing. Jimmy didn't know the podcast was happening until five minutes before I texted him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, thank you, Jimmy, for rushing your ass over here and making yourself available. Uh, the debate this week is... It's it's all about the bad guys. Uh, can bad guys find redemption? Specifically, can they find redemption in, in running a daycare? Uh, we decided to look at all the villains and bad people that are that are in film over the years and, and see if there's any good qualities inside of them and if those good qualities could then be applied to running a daycare and going uh, making sure that daycare has everything it needs. Does it have its snack time, its nap time? Um, are we doing field trips? What's the theme of the daycare? Why would this uh, villain-esque person be a good uh, example of a boss for a daycare? I'm going to stop saying daycare. Uh, so without further ado, um, I will clip that real and you enjoy the show Like, yeah, Waluigi Ledger, was based on... What's his name? Uh, uh, who's 10 Second Mars? Uh, Jared, Jared Leto. Leto. Jared Leto. I always think of him as uh, the dude from... What was that? Uh, the heroin movie. The heroin movie. Requiem for a Requiem Dream. Requiem for a Dream. Yeah. That's my Jared Leto. That's exactly, I think, where I... What, he was on. He was a TV guy before he was a movie guy. He was a little screen before big screen. What was he in, in TV before? Oh, what? I don't fucking know. I just know he was on TV. <laughs> um, he did them commercials. He, no, he was on... He was on, I don't know. Like some one of those, He was on My So-Called Life. My so called teenage life? I've never seen that. With Claire I've never Danes? Seen it. Oh, I haven't watched it. Yeah, he was the love interest on that show. I oh. think. Well, fuck it. We never fact check, so why are we going to Is that an ABC now? show or something? Uh, NBC? Yeah. Like Paul Dawson's Creek. Yeah. Everybody yeah. 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 was on Dawson's Creek. <laughs> Every. <laughs> you know, those kids on Dawson's Lacey Creek. Lacey Chabert. Like, <laughs> That's all I know because she's from Family Guy. Like, like just, she was Meg, Meg in the season one. Oh, yeah. <sighs> this new microphone adjustment thing is messing with me here. But it's messing with you. I want to. I want to pay attention to the kids from Dawson's Creek and just mention that now that wait for our lives to be over. Now that I'm older, <laughs> no fucking kid knows themselves that well at that age. <laughs> I knew my dick super well at that age. That was about it. That's all I knew. But like, uh, you know, there, this self-actualization, self-realization bullshit that, you know, Dawson and Pacey and Joey were all going through and like uh, nobody talked that cool. But weren't no. they 30 in the show? Like no, they were actually 30 in junior high. It was back in the day when were they really in junior high though? But they were like they were twenties in their twenties yeah. in junior high. They were playing junior high kids in their twenties. Oh yeah, but I'm just saying the the writing was written for kids of high school and junior high age, and n- kids are going through like why do I what what's this hair on my ball sack and now my voice is getting lower for women the equivalent. Just They'd be the same dicks. age as like Degrassi. You know, that's exactly <laughs> what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, and Degrassi so, tackled the tough issues like zits. <laughs> and teen pregnancy. Saved by the Bell had Drake tackled some shot. crazy ones. <laughs> Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell had crazy ones. It, it did. tackled drug use. It totally did. It, Jesse Spano yeah. was doing speed because she oh, was yeah. trying to remember that episode. Yes. Yeah, that was huge. Yeah. Anyways, just the, I'm so I, excited. I she was all, she, wasn't she just hopped up on like it's speed caffeine like, pills, caffeine or, pills something. or something? Yeah. They it didn't make it like hard drugs. Was, was I alive? I thought for it was show. I don't no, think so. I don't think. I think you've heard about Saved by the Bell. 
Oh yeah, Jimmy, yeah, I don't yeah. think you've Zach th- Morris Zach? is a terrible person. Slater, Z- Slater, Screech. Yeah, Zach Morris is a, Lisa. a douche. He's an awful Jesse. human being. Down by Bayside. Lisa. Oh, Lisa. Lisa. Lark Voorhees. Lark Voorhees. What a name, hey? Yeah. I like it. What is a lark? Lisa is a lark Turtle. A, is the lark a bird? It's a yeah. good time. Yeah. It's a bird. I'm She's right. uh, of the Shit, Voorhees family. Vor- who's the Jason oh, Voorhees. Of the Jasons? <laughs> yeah. The Voorhees of the Jasons? <laughs> That's a great family. Her uncle Jason's a uh, big movie star. <laughs> <laughs> Likes to play hockey on the weekends. <laughs> That's her reference. That's how she got on the show. Yeah. Uncle Jason referred me. You may know my father. <laughs> From such movies as Friday the 13th, 1 through 40. <laughs> how many are uh, there, Jimmy? Uh, there's 11, including the new reboot. Like that came out in 2009. Oh, and I the think J- they're doing another one soon. Is he still in space? <laughs> no. I like <laughs> No, he got X. saved by Captain Marvel. That's it. Home. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. She <laughs> brought everybody home. Brought him back I to planet Earth and everyone's doomed. No one can go camping anymore because she brought him back. Yeah. Hundred percent. Camping's canceled. Um, yeah, I just wanted to point out that teen- writing for teenage people on TV is so unrealistic. There was a rapper. I'm trying to think of his name. Is it Drake? Two chains. No, he Two. did the song. Tupac uh, I love college. <laughs> I love college. Okay. Asher Roth. Asher Roth. Oh. Yeah. The song "Lark in My Go Kart." Yeah, I've heard that. It's fantastic. Talking about Lark Voorhees. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's the only song I would <laughs> what? think maybe what no. is Lark Voorhees up to now I don't know I have no I, idea I miss her on, I miss her seeing her on, t- on TV I think you know they what? all got together for like a reunion thing on Did they? morning TV yeah oh wow yeah but don't don't hold me to that you know I got a perfect moment for a segue here instead of just being like alright guys let's start the show so I'm gonna go Martin you know what I wanna know I wanna know what you were up to this week smooth segue <laughs> what did I watch <laughs> yeah what'd you watch uh, I watched a Netflix. <laughs> not, not so smooth, smooth apparently. <laughs> it would be smoother if you didn't point it out. Yeah, I know. Well, I, was, I was trying to make a funny. Uh, I watched a Netflix movie, In the Shadow of the Moon. Oh, yeah. Are I you seriously got... referring to notes of what you watched this week? I had to look at <laughs> the, the title. Way to shoot from the hip there, Navarro. I had to look at the title. I don't memorize What titles. did I watch this week? <laughs> <laughs> it was my Netflix history. I've That's got it I here watched. somewhere. I have to look pages. at my Netflix history. Oh, goodness. I don't He's remember watched. what I watched. He's watched so much. I <laughs> smoked so much weed this week that I don't remember. I have to check what my Netflix history was. No, I, I, I'm on your side on that one. I'll, I'll get up in the morning and be like, what did I watch yeah. last I night? just don't remember the titles. I remember what the movie was about. I just don't remember the title. I want to know what I'm currently watching. What You're this? Wa- oh, this is... This is amazing. Okay, yeah. Ooh, um, it's a, it's Martin, a... we're going to pause this for a second about <laughs> what you watched. This is a mountain yeah. climbing fucking billy goat. Is this I... the new Joker trailer? He's climbing a wall. <laughs> That's not even a mountain. That's a wall. <laughs> this is Jared Little trying to <laughs> learn how to play the Joker. This is Jared Little trying to ascend to Nick. Nicholson's level. <laughs> I figured why not leave some shit out in the background. Is he going to sacrifice right? this goat? Is that what Leto's going to do? Because okay. that's the only way. Holy so for, shit. Hang on. So for everybody listening, uh, we're going to put a, what a pin in the, the movie <laughs> that Martin couldn't remember we watched. But th- these are, uh, in the background on my TV, these are Ibexes. These are uh. baby Ibex. And they're like, just for anybody, for the listeners, uh, like a 90, like an 87 degree angle very vertical specific. wall. Very, very, I think very... it's more 88.5. Let me crunch those numbers though. <laughs> Point three, Chance three, of three, success, three, point three, 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 repeating, three, of course. Repeating. Uh, how do they do this? Th- well, I'm assuming that they know how to hold their gr- their he's body just weight. in the wall. And he's, he's, that's yeah. how he's eating. He's like, he's I'm going for a snack. Um, so, yeah. This they're clearly super chill yeah, for yeah. being on the edge of death. <laughs> yeah. I love this show. They're even, they're even cooler than, than Stallone and Cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Rooker and Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> no one's cooler than Stallone and Cliffhanger. You know what? If I own two... Except- I think John Clive Van Damme and John Clive Van Damme and Double Impact. That's the only cooler, <laughs> cooler person. How many? Are if I Jesus. that is just ridiculous. Mark, if I had two Ibexes, I would name them Sylvester and Michael, <laughs> <Would you>? in <laughs> honor of Michael Ricker and Stallone from Cliffhanger. Um, anyways, should I turn this off? Can we? Can yeah. we put this? Okay, yeah. Let yeah, me hang on. Let me turn this no. off. It's fascinating as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, radio people. No. You're not appreciating this, but this is what Mike watches when he's stoned. It was interesting. <laughs> oh, I, I would, I would watch that too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a pin in that and come back to that. We'll come back to it right after the show. I promise you. Anyways, you not... what did you watch there? Yeah, uh, in the shadow <laughs> That's of the a smooth moon. segue. I'd say it was brought to you by Mark Cal, who will uh, teach a, Michael Buffer how to did do you it. What did you watch? The Netflix movie. <laughs> How's that for a segue? <laughs> Netflix movie in in the shadow of the moon. Okay. Yeah. And we'll give us a quick uh, scenario. It's, it's just basically about this guy in the 80s. He's a cop. And then um, it, it follows his life all the way from, eighty. I think, 88 all the way to 2018, 2016. Okay. And um, basically, he's trying to chase after this woman who committed a series of murders, and he's trying to solve the murder. And just Over, the, like, different... Over, over the course of the entire... From 80 to 2016. Okay. So... 
and he finds out it's it has to do something with with time travel. Oh, I love time travel. I hate time travel movies now, man. I, I posted it they're, earlier, they're and that post cliche, was like, but... I just don't get time travel movies anymore. Ever since Avengers like fucked it up for me when they said Back to the Future was bullshit, and I was like, well, I don't get how this has worked. <laughs> like, is this gonna be real? Can they really change their reality now? Because like it's someone going to the past, basically changing. Yeah, the but it Avengers Endgame told you it's not like Back to the Future. So then this movie was fucking bullshit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm the like, thing, I, <laughs> the, the, okay, so not to interrupt you, but the greatest thing about time travel movies is that they don't have to get it right because nobody's got it right yet. Yeah. So they can they can theorize, they can play within. So then Avengers yeah. was bullshit. No, Avengers is just playing within the same. They are all equally. They're right all equally wrong. bullshit. Yeah. It's oh, it's like, like uh, is it Schrodinger's cat? It's the Schrodinger's say. cat of okay. time yeah. travel. Yeah. yeah. Alive and dead at the same time. <laughs> Wow, this went deep for we a second. We went deep there. with that shit. All right, out of the, out of the deep end of the swimming pool. So back to time travel and um, why it's bullshit. Why it's, why it's like bullshit? bullshit? Yeah, <laughs> science, bitches. Um, did you like it? It was okay. Like it, yeah. I would give it uh, like a B plus, okay. maybe a B minus. Actually, um, who's in it? Anybody of uh, the guy from Narcos, the cop from Narcos. He's in it, and then I can't remember anybody Which else. Cop really. from Narcos. The yeah. the white cop. Oh, in season one, season oh, one, season one. Yeah, the guy who's going after. Uh, yeah, the not, guy who uh, moves with his wife. Not Oberon Martell. No, not him. Not him. Not him. <laughs> okay. no, no. Uh, so, uh, would like uh, how many uh, moons out of ten would you give it? I give it like maybe a seven. Seven. So maybe a six. B, B six plus and seven. seven. Yeah. I mean, like, if there's something better to watch on Netflix, watch that. But I was bored and I got high, and I'm like, oh, I'll just watch this. This looks cool. Yeah, I, I so. heard about it online. I, I, you know the websites that say the next best 20 things on netflix yeah. this month right? i was so. gonna i couldn't like i watched that because i couldn't i couldn't finish between two ferns i could what? not finish that why? movie why did you not finish it why? i just i don't know i think i was too high and then i'm just like i i couldn't sit through it i couldn't i couldn't power through it boo boo yeah. this man i hear I the best part is the is the um what are those parts of the movie that never make it to the movie oh the, the, <laughs> the outtakes, outtakes. <laughs> i was gonna i was i almost said takeouts yeah that's wrong we i just love the before. takeouts i the think takeouts are God, amazing I'm hungry. yeah <laughs> dine and dash is the best that's what we're talking about takeouts right? and outtakes in the theater yes uh, <laughs> no I, I think i think i know what i'm talking about i just don't know what to call it <laughs> we talked going. about it on the podcast like a uh, podcast fest like I, I think i was just too high i might try watching yes, it sober yeah we did um, but yeah, it was just I couldn't I couldn't sit down and I didn't have the patience for it. I was on my phone constantly and it was like, eh, didn't That's really okay. need to pay I mean, attention. It is it is short bursts. There's nothing yeah. really linear about that story. Yeah. It's like here's your interview and now here's another interview and here's more awkward. Yeah. So it's like you didn't really need to. Like it was yeah, you need to follow up. You know what you don't think of when you think of Galifianakis is what linear. <laughs> 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 he has a, he has no direction whatsoever. Yeah, why would I? That's the. Li- Nobody would describe a movie that he does. One like million that. people surveyed. <laughs> <laughs> what is the first word that comes to your mind when you think of Zach Galifianakis? Line- linear. Well, linear. Linear. <laughs> Do we have linear? <laughs> no. <laughs> Show me linear. <laughs> Cowl family, would you like to steal? <laughs> All right, cool. I'm glad so, you got my reference. Yeah, no, I, I totally did. Show me um, potato salad. I, I fucking love Steve Harvey on that show. Like he just he makes that show. Perfect. I've only watched the Steve Harvey version a couple times. There was the other version. I Who's the original host again? I remember him. Richard Dawson. Richard, Dawson. Richard yeah. Carr and another Richard that doesn't do things anymore that I can't remember. Didn't Drew Carey host it for a while? No, mm, he's doing Price, Price is Right. Oh, no, right? He did Price, Price is Right. He's got Price yeah. is Right. Yeah. Um, so is it Martin just to kind of end on on a actual movie note sci-fi is it what it's about is yeah it, it's science fiction so, it's about the future yeah, yeah those will be yeah okay it's kind of cool. like a mixture of, of time travel with 12 monkeys nice <sighs> a little bit a little bit okay i'll give it a shot uh mr mark cowell what did i watch this week i'm gonna take two things i yes. watched a movie that everybody's seen so sure yeah, whatever i finally saw um spider-man far from home i haven't seen it yet Ooh, me oh really Ooh. and we're doing this how embarrassed am i to admit that on yeah on, um so i watched far from home I, I liked it a lot. Um, I think it's taken the Spider-Man franchise in a in a more humorous, fun direction. Yep. It was a little... I mean, there's the heartfelt play in the whole thing, sort of the... Because this is post... Post-Endgame. Post-Blip. Yep. Right? Post-Snap. What's the first one, right? First one. And Yeah, and it's taking place... Well, after everybody's come back. Oh, so... It, okay, so... So they address that in the movie. It's It takes place after Endgame. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm, at, yeah. I'm at the point where I'm, I'm going to watch it. It's on Xbox. I might rent yeah. it, but I'm not... It's good. It's, it's yeah. funny. They make some, like, humorous... Um, uh, like, they say humorous things about the, the snap. They okay. call it the blip. Oh. And so they'll say... And apparently what you get told in it is that everybody who blipped out didn't age. Weird. So everybody else here was five years. 
Interesting. Right? So they're five I got years five years older. on you, Mr. Yeah. Downey Jr. So people are coming back younger mm. than... It's a lot of weird you know? relationships. Yeah. Now. They said it was kind of fucked up. So they're like in the high school and they're talking about, oh, he blipped. So they're on like, there's this oh. kid being, being kind of a dick at one point and he's having this drink. They're flying on an airplane. Yeah. Right? And he's in first class having this this thing, this guy who's Peter's <laughs> adversary in school. And uh, Peter goes to the flight attendant and goes, he blipped. He's only 15, not 21. <laughs> 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 nice. Nice. So they reference this blip and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, it was it was good. It, there's a, some really good humor in it. They keep talking. Aunt May's hilarious one is... Uh, She's talking about a spidey sense, and he's trying to describe it <laughs> to her. And he's like, "Oh, you mean your Peter yeah. Tingle?" Your Peter Tingle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what it, it is. And uh, they reference it numerous times. Very, you know, oh, your Peter very Tingle. Well done. Favreau's really good in it. Uh, I thought, yeah, it was uh, it was good. It was that, entertaining. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm the firm believer that we argue movies here. We're not relevant with what's yeah. current. We don't always go all see the most relevant movie all the time because this is about the celebration of cinema altogether, not current cinema. That's not that's not what we fucking do here. So I'm... Uh, yeah, I, I, I like it. It stands alone as a good movie, I think, mm-hmm. an interesting movie enough. Um, and the whole idea behind Mysterio was pretty cool. Yeah. I never knew... What so is, I was a surprise to me. Yeah, it was cool. Like I knew he's a trickster from you know back in the old. He was like days. a special effects expert. Yeah. but yeah. I didn't realize comics. exactly like how this was going to play out, and it, it was pretty cool. It was a neat idea. I liked the way it. Uh, I liked the way it worked out. I liked his alter ego uh, superhero name. Yeah, that they in Paris. That was like black something. Uh, um, what was it? Night Monkey? Night Monkey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, is that awesome. Spider Man? No, it's uh, Night Monkey. Night Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a black suit. And then they see like the, the film clips of the next place. He's like, blah, 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 Night Monkey. Because <laughs> they're in Italy or something. <laughs> okay, question. Not having seen it, but happy that this that the Sony, Disney, Spider-Man. Merger. Merger. Angry parents finally are getting along. They've gone to counseling. They've, yeah, I think amicable. Spider-Man Spider-Man deserves to be in the MCU. Yes. Okay. But is would it, if if Sony was only responsible for it now that you've seen it, do you think it would shit the bed? Like I'm asking now that you've yeah, seen. Yeah, because the parts that I enjoyed the most are all the references back to MCU. Mm-hmm. Which it's they wouldn't him, be allowed to do. Right? The entire movie, there's a link back to him and Stark. Right? There, yes, there's a yeah. major piece of tech in the movie that Stark left in his. Of course he did. In control, right? So Slimy there's bastard. lots of that. Re- so without MCU, you don't have that portion. Yeah. You don't have, uh, you don't have Favreau, right? You like don't have that continuity. whole side of it. Yeah. You don't have uh, uh, Fury. Yeah. Right. Who's a big part of the movie, like all of that kind of stuff. So. And I feel that. But that's the, what Marvel does so well. That's, that's what I want to yeah. see is yes. that they bring they took time and put everything together and just to tear a piece apart and stand alone. I don't think it'll. And I, I love like that they that. didn't take like massive characters from the MCU. Like they didn't take other superheroes. They yep. took these like the side, small players yeah. and they incorporated it, which is really cool. And mm. Sony and DC just like everybody else who's trying to do a comic book movie. My point is. Is they paint in watercolors where Disney paints in oil? Is yeah. Don't I loved Venom? I actually really so liked did I. Venom. It was still a little but dry for my liking, yeah. but it, it you can clearly see the difference. Like there's something I don't know what it is. If it's budget related, or if it's talent, or if it's oversight, or if or if it's just dumb fucking luck that every time Disney steps up to the plate with a Marvel movie, they just nail it. Even if it's not your favorite, they nail it. They do it solid. What I think they're getting right now is it's sort of the phenomenon when you become familiar with something. It's like it's like our podcast, right? You do the first one, you don't have any inside jokes, you don't have yeah, any re- reoccurring yeah. themes, you don't have you any avant garde, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's something normal movie franchises have difficult time repeating because then they just go into the sequels, and you're yeah. just trying to tell more and more stories with the same players. Well, the MCU is an ability to continue those jokes over different leads, different stories, but you can still draw back to all these underlying jokes yes. and stuff, which is the f- the good part about sequels, but without the suck. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so well, it's, yeah. and w- what else has ever been like that in, in the history of movie Nothing. making where there's, you know, 50 movies that all basically this is history. coexist, right? This is, this is a yeah. big studio historical moment in cinema, not, for writing or for you know acting but for an attempt just to yeah. bring a world 
off the pages of some of the world's most favorite superheroes. And superheroes is a touchy fucking subject. I don't want to go along on this, ha- but like it, people love yeah. their fucking superheroes. And you don't even have to have a superhero show. Like I really liked um, Jennifer Jones. Yeah, but it yeah. wasn't superhero-y so much as it it's was more like a detective, a detective show. show. Yeah. But it, it it does the nod to the superheroes, right? It, like yeah. every now and then you see her jump yeah. or punch somebody, or it it's takes like, place in a world where there is superheroes, right? Like they reference Hulk, they yeah. reference the Avengers and stuff. It's really yeah. cool. But it's like an old gumshoe detective story yeah. for the most part. Sure, so. yeah, and that's what everybody I know said. I, I did. I didn't get into it, but they said it was. It played well into that. Like Netflix cared for that. That so. was another thing to to segue to that. That was the other thing I did. Is I finished the last season of Jennifer Jones and finished. Oh. It. and they ended the series. Jennifer Jones is the curler. Oh, sorry, uh, Jessica <laughs> Jones. <laughs> yes, they ended Jennifer Jones. Uh, she will not be curling. Hashtag anymore. Bonspiel if you're uh, following us on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Scotties. <laughs> um, but oh, Jessica Jones. Bar. Yeah. Uh, hashtag yeah, Tim Hortons. So they ended, they ended the whole series and it was good. I think it. Good. It was one of those ones where the end, sometimes, you know, you feel kind of rushed because you got to tie up a lot of loose ends. Yes. Mm-hmm. But it was still good. It was like, entertaining. Like, I don't know, Game of Thrones or something, but uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, cool. So, like, how much web would you sling out of 10? Um, I'm giving it a solid, like, like... <laughs> That was meant to be an innuendo, by the way. Yeah. If you're all like, was he being perverted? I'm being yeah. dirty. Eight eight shots of web. Ooh. <laughs> Standing up for that one. A lot of stamina for that one. Yeah. No kidding. Like consecutive eight, shots. Eight web, eight shots, web shots, shots out of ten. Eight, eight web, web balls. Eight, eight wet webs hanging on a tree. Eight webs to do a web swing. <laughs> Lord. Webster. <laughs> to reference the old uh, Spider-Man cartoon, I would. <laughs> do you remember when he was like swinging, and yes. it would be like the same building would swing Did by they do like that in the numerous movie. times? No, and we but, didn't even care. But it used to be awesome. So I'd be like, yeah, it was like eight swings past the same building out of ten. <laughs> That's an even better <laughs> reference. I'm don't even know how I missed that. Thank you. That's way. So eight swings out of ten for the same scene. Yes. Rocket Robin Hood did that. Um, Spider Man did, did it. Why make all, more cells? Yeah. Just use the same yeah. cell over and over and over. Again. <laughs> all right, Jimmy. Rocket Robin That's my is name. horrible. Jimmy. Oh, or, oh, you're, uh, I just want. Blade. I'm just making sure you're here because I know when I <laughs> huh? when I messaged you. What podcast is tomorrow night? <laughs> not tonight. I mean tonight, not tomorrow night. Oh, when is which it? night is it, Mike? <laughs> I, I don't even know. What are we doing? Are we are we recording? Surprise, Jimmy! It actually is tomorrow night. Yeah, we just brought you over. This is just a just mind all fuck. trolling me. Yeah, this is an inception. What's up, buddy? Oh, I, I'm just excited for Blade to come back. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, all I've time. ever wanted. For 20 minutes, he's like, I just want to talk about Blade. <laughs> we just talk about Blade. Well, Blade. first of all, thank you for filling in for Chris. Ah, happy to be here. You're, and Bueno. And Bueno, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that was... that. <laughs> I, have ba- I have a scheduling issue. I There's think. really no filling yeah. in anymore. It's just a rotating cast of extremely cool characters. It, yes. Oh, fuck yeah. yes. Just like thank, the MCU, yeah. but yeah, not just, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we keep pulling from the same well. Uh, so what did you watch this week, Jimmy Jimster? I watched the 1987 horror classic Blood Rage, also known as <laughs> Slasher, also known as uh, Terror on Shallow Ridge. How does yeah. one find that movie with so many titles? Oh, uh, there's there's like this horror movie YouTube account that I watch called Dead Meat, and it refers to a lot of old movies that I really like to watch because they're just so horribly campy and <laughs> a lot of fun. Like this one is. One of two Thanksgiving based horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, it is the it's season. It's close, right? It is the some, season. Some genre. Um, I thought it was a good pick. Yeah, can you search that on Netflix? Thanksgiving I think the horror? Old, <laughs> horror subgenre holidays, <laughs> subgenre Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, you know, the only other horror Thanksgiving genre was what was that Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez movie with the trailers when the dude was fucking the turkey? Oh, yeah. You remember that? Uh, from Death Proof. Death Proof, yeah. It was a tra- one of the trailers. Oh, I forget what it was called, but a dude was just fucking a turkey. And like, it was like, oh my God. Dead meat. It was like, they would just, it would, it would, it, like the founding forefathers. Yeah. Some well, they had like related. Nazi werewolves yes, and then like that, yeah. and that dude fucking a turkey. And I was like, what the? F- <laughs> anyway, so two and a half movies. Go on. Jimmy. Thanksgiving based horror Anyways, movies. Thanksgiving yes, works. Oh, God. Please explain that genre to anyone that? looking for one. <laughs> well, it's pretty much just, there is no genre. It's just Blood Rage and Thanks Killing 1 and 3. Okay. The joke is there is no 2. That's the whole thing for <laughs> Thanks Killing. Yep. But let's talk about Thanks Blood Rage. Killing. Thanks, Thanks Killing. killing. That's, yeah. a good, that's a solid name. Yeah, tell the, yeah. give us well, a I didn't watch Thanks of, Killing, uh, okay? Uh, <laughs> is it on the list, though? Is it like yeah. on your to-do? It'll be yeah. coming up. Uh, yeah, Blood Rage was <laughs> fucking awesome. Two week awesome. on Thanksgiving? <laughs> <laughs> I have a schedule, Okay. <laughs> okay. I liked Blood Rage. It was it was weird. It's about um 
It's about these two tw- identical twin boys who um, are at like a drive-in theater with their mom, and their mom starts hooking up with a dude, and it's like they give a reaction like it's something that they're totally used to. They both Meh. just like, "Hey, mom's, mom's a slut. Mom's doing her thing. Let's get out of here." And they slip out of the back of the car, and then for no reason whatsoever, uh, one of the twin brothers just murders a couple in their car and frames the other brother who doesn't protest in any way. <laughs> Yes, yep, it yeah. was me. I guess I did it. And they send him to a mental hospital, and then like the movie takes place years later now, and he escapes the mental hospital, the innocent brother, and now comes home, and the real brother they, they're is men? like... Is that he's like an adult at this point? Yeah, and okay. it's played by the same guy, not even uh, identical twins. Who is and it? He, know? Nobody important. Okay. Oh. <laughs> he's got great hair. Um, yeah, so... The once he escapes prison and the uh, the brother who actually did the murders finds out about that, he just starts killing everybody that they go to Thanksgiving As you do. with. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so uh, that's where I guess blood rage comes from. Yeah, the title. Do I you mean, think I should? Sp- I'm gonna spoil it. Yeah. So I, yeah, I don't think I'm, I think I'm good on that one. Yeah, so told, go ahead. I'm I'm hanging on a cliff here. <laughs> so uh, at the end of the movie. The mom shoots one of the brothers, and she thinks that it's the 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 one who actually committed the murder. The Killy brother? Yeah, yeah the Killy brother. But it's not. But it's not. <laughs> and so he's like, ah, I did it. Thanks, killing one and two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Car- back in the carbon. So you watch this on YouTube on a channel on YouTube? Is that no, you no, no. They just, um, like, they review horror movies Oh, and okay, stuff, so okay, okay. I was like, oh, I should check that out. Was I it- found it. I had to download it online illegally. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's our sponsor for today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. sure they're happy for the view. Like, I'm sure I'm sure that movie's like, please Sponsored download. by MicroTorrent? Yeah. <laughs> Sponsored by, by P-Bay. Sponsored P-Bay. by get a VPN before you download. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, no. <laughs> Brought to you by Nord VPN. <laughs> Hollywood, if you're listening, Jimmy is in Winnipeg, Manitoba. <laughs> Damn it. I'm sure that person does not listen the to the The studio that podcast. made that movie is yeah. long gone. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> Someone's got the rights to it, though, Mark. Someone's got the rights to it. That's, that's a chapter 11, if I've ever heard one. I don't um, know if anyone has the rights to it. It's like public domain, like, uh, like Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Anyone can have it. That's oh, true, yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, so out of, uh, let's see here, what's creative? Um, out of um, 10 dirty moms having sex in front of their kids, how, what would you rate this movie? <laughs> oh, no. I was going to say I was gonna say carved turkeys. Yeah, yeah okay, that would have been better. Yeah, Because it's Thanksgiving. I, I didn't see that. It's not Thanksgiving. It's, it's no. What, what are you talking but about? But he's killing people during Thanksgiving in Blood Rage. Yeah, but Thanksgiving is the other movie. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Are, is it, the, doesn't they, are yeah. they still killing people in Thanksgiving in this movie? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So they're still carving turkeys during Thanksgiving. All right. <laughs> yeah. I was Anyways. listening to you the whole time, Jimmy. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> One of two Thanksgiving-based Themed horror, horror movies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess there's technically three, because Thanksgiving 3 exists. I just appreciate your yes. passive aggressiveness, Mark. You're not even looking <laughs> at Martin as you know. Aggress- it's aggressive aggressiveness. It's aggressive okay. aggressiveness. Yeah. yeah, it's aggressive. It's aggressive it's, passiveness. Yeah, Agro squared. <laughs> so All right. I think I'd give it... Uh, about seven cans of cranberry sauce and half a <laughs> stuffing. <laughs> <laughs> who's getting? Who's so no turkey? No, no turkey. turkey. Their mom is getting the stuffing. Is that, was, that what you were gonna <laughs> say? That's what I was trying. I'm like, <laughs> there's nah, no around this. Should I go back to that? No. There's, there's they three. got interrupted. She <laughs> only got half a stuffing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody's getting around this mom. It sounds like so. <laughs> uh, I watched. Um, I, I've, I I had heard about this movie briefly, getting a quick review, saying it was one of his better attempts at trying to make his career. Um, alive again, which was dragged across concrete, starring Vince Vaughn and Mel Gibson. It's on Amazon Prime, and it is a two and a half hour long movie. Oh, geez, Vince Vaughn, Vince and Vaughn. Mel Gibson <laughs> playing. It is okay. So it's a story about two cops who get screwed on a call. Someone catches them on video, and they're being aggressive. So they're suspended. They need to make money. So they do what every cop who's been suspended apparently does in this movie. Which is Cocaine. committed crime. <laughs> so they find out about a heroin dealer who's like military trained with a crew of assassins and they try to take his drugs and his heroin. And They try to. They try to, yes. His dr- sorry, his heroin and his money. Um, all the while, there's these uh, two guys, who, two, two African-American gentlemen who are from the hood and they took a job to drive the getaway van for the heroin dealer. And throughout the entire movie, this chain of events happens where everything that's planned goes to shit and everybody with what they want to happen to them just does not play out. And uh, it, it's this like it's 
it's kind of like a cool cop movie. It's like if Lethal Weapon was smart instead of just being a comedy, right? Like it's mm-hmm. dark and it's like two grizzly cops, one's younger than the other. Vince Vaughn plays the young Italian, Mel Gibson's the guy on the way. <laughs> Vince Vaughn out. is the older guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I loved a, he's it. He's young in this movie? <laughs> he's well yeah, like he's younger than Did his, he get a time machine? He's, he's younger than Mel Gibson. He's twenty years younger, but he's still whatever. The the I loved it. I thought it was absolutely great. It's one of those sleepers that Where'd obviously you hear about it? I saw it on Amazon Prime and I'm like I think, on. I think I heard about Mel Gibson getting a great review for this movie based on the fact that he's kind of gritty and fed up and a bigot and a this like just angry cool cop. So Mel Gibson is the Danny Glover in this movie. I'm too old for this shit. That's, That's what Mel Gibson pretty is. Pretty much yeah. And every scenario that he's in, he he weighs it based on a percentage of outcomes. So like at the end of the movie when they're going in to clearly, you know, take the drugs and the money from the heroin dealer, um he looks over at him. He's like, well, what do you give us? And he's like 70% for you. And uh, well, he says 85% for me and 70% for you. Cause you're with me. <laughs> he's like, why 70? He's like, well, you're also Italian, right? Like there's a lot of like, uh-huh. like it's, I really dug the writing. The story was a little weak, but the exchanges between characters was really good. It was dark and gritty and weird. And there's some intense violent scenes that go on in the movie that really make no sense and have no placement in it. But all in all, um, like I like six angry rants from Mel Gibson at two in the morning, being drunk on the side of the road, being anti-Semitic out of 10. <laughs> I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> I'll pass. Well, yeah, you, what did I say? That was great. And you were like, I want my two hours back. Oh, Godzilla. <laughs> the, the King of Monsters. I, I couldn't. Yeah, that yeah. was Godzilla bad. Ever. Right. The King of Monsters. It was not good. It was Just not a good movie. Blast. I know where you didn't it like great. it. I thought I it like looked it. beautiful. It like looked. It. it was cinematically like cinematography was was spot yeah. on. But this, uh, there was plot holes. There was yeah, like the oxygen bomb. Shit. Like you're just gonna just they, let's just nuke the planet. Yeah. That's all they did. Let's nuke everything. I was like, ah, oh, this is whatever. I all didn't right. like it. That's how Alien looking for Predator plot holes in a kaiju movie. It's like Swiss cheese. (laughs) Anyways, uh, so let's let's uh, let's dig into the trailer of the week, shall we? We don't have Chris here to do any cool. Who wants to do some cool sound effects? Give it to the room. Uh, Oh, we might get sued for that. (laughs) Yeah. No, no, that's short enough that we won't. There's there is a length that is respectable for sound bites. Uh, So we decided to do uh, Birds of Prey: The Emancipation of Harley Quinn. You know what a Harley Quinn is. A harlequin's role is to serve. It's nothing without a master. No one gives two shits who we are beyond that. The Joker and I broke up. I wanted a fresh start. But it turns out I wasn't the only dame in Gotham looking for emancipation. New. The Fantabulous. The Fantabulous. The sorry, yeah. It's that. hard to read because the, at the that, bottom, that, yeah. at the bottom, it's there, like it's that a little... stupid Ted Bundy movie with Zac Efron. They just gave it a really long title to piss yeah. me off. Yeah, no, I, I don't appreciate long titles. <laughs> I don't even know what the title is called. I just know there's a Zac Efron movie playing Ted Bundy. Okay. Extremely well. evil and horribly vile or some sort of combination of And incredibly of close. And incredibly close. <laughs> It's not the that, Tom Hanks that, movie. Yeah. That really annoying movie with Zac Efron about yeah. Ted Bundy. Yeah. Which is, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, really... I, if you didn't say Ted Bundy, I would have like, all of them? <laughs> I've been reading about how festivals look at a movie when it's doing the, the festival circuit versus when it gets into the theaters and how there is, there's your critic review, there is your public review, right? The the us in the room. And then there is your festival review. It almost it almost seems that festival reviews are like, oh, it's just a bunch of hoity doony festival film people and you're raving about how great the movie is. And it's like, well, yeah, you can't like th- they're in the industry, right? So it's unfair to judge the festival circuit on how bad or good a movie might be because they appreciate film in a different way than some asshole from his couch, you know, yeah, which right. is like I us. <laughs> um, like us, right? Like like us <laughs> like sitting here. Like for. And uh, so, so yeah, just that, that little comment. Anyways, Martin, what'd you think of the trailer? Uh, I I'll probably watch it. Um, I thought I think I told you uh, during like a pre-show. I was like, uh, like she was like Margot Robbie's my favorite part about uh, totally, Suicide yeah. Squad. That was the only thing that I liked about it. Everything else I didn't. But I'm um, glad to see her back, and hopefully it's good. I mean, it's got it's got uh, Ewan McGregor, who I love. <laughs> So 
Ewan McGregor talking with a not an not an English accent. Yeah. I guess that's how you would describe Ewan McGregor when he's talking like us. So I love it. I, I like Rosie Perez in there too, so I'm I'm looking forward to it. Mary Elizabeth Winstead's yeah. in there. Rosie Perez, like you said, yeah. There's a there's a that is a heavy female cast of talent and craziness. Like I hope that trailer. like you know since we got even it wasn't a great introduction of um, Harley Quinn, but we got one. Yes. I hope now that yeah. we they don't need to do as much cutting back with the story. You know what I mean? The backstories of all the like that's what I Open think. Open the floodgates, so to speak. That yeah, that was that was a, the, the weakness of Suicide Squad. They just did too much backstory, and it just it was too much of a clusterfuck. Hopefully, this one won't have as much since we have the main character. We already know her and what she stands for and stuff like that. So I I couldn't agree with you more, Mark. What do you think? Yeah, I, it's uh, maybe a new a movie that needed to be made. Because it's sort of the it's a very empowering female type yes. movie, but yes. anti hero villain sort oh, of yeah right like on the flip side of things. So you get your you know your the female superheroes, which is great. You had the big the scene in like Endgame where yes right the they're all kind of li- I don't know what you want to call it. They all the line up assemble the ensemble. Assemble. assemble yeah. yeah the Avengers assemble yeah. yeah. Um, but this is sort of the opposite, right? You get it. It looks from the the clip that it's a very sort of empowering, breaking free from the from the mold, of, right? Yeah, like the line yeah. where they're talking about a um, a Harlequin, yes, a servant, right? Yeah. Yes, he needs to have a master, and Harley Quinn is clearly doesn't breaking, need a master, she's totally right? Breaking yeah, those so. yeah. And then like the reference to you never call a woman a psycho. You can call her like you know all of these derogatory names, maybe yeah. even a bitch, but you don't call her a yeah, psycho. No, like, <laughs> Aren't you that psycho chick? Yeah. yeah. Hey, <laughs> never call a woman a chick. Yeah. Psycho's okay. Yeah. <laughs> call, it, what did she say? Call her a, a, a woman, a broad, or something like that. Occasionally a bitch. But, but never, <laughs> a, but chick. never a, chick. a chick. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, I think yeah. it's good. I like Margot Robbie as uh, Harley. Um, I don't. I like that she doesn't do the really annoying Harley Quinn voice. The, you the, know, we're like talking the about the, the Batman top, cartoon yeah. animated yeah. series. Yeah, yeah, the animated series. Hey, uh. Mister J. <laughs> so uh, I like that Harley Quinn. She was good too. Does that, does that give you a little bulge in the? Everything bottom? does. I love the. I told you that. That's who my pick was for one of the top. It was Harley Quinn. Anyways, yeah. but any, I, I'm gonna for sure see it. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed her in in Suicide Squad, and this seems like a better version of Suicide Squad. Can we plan a date together? I think we can. All three of us, yeah. all four of us, Jimmy. That's you all the come? show is is just you guys planning dates with each other. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. I just I bought a lot of expensive equipment just to plan my social life. Uh, Jimmy, what are your thoughts on this, sir? No, I agree with Mark. I think it could be a lot better than Suicide Squad. I think it can be better because they like they aren't going to have to focus on seven different characters as at once that are all trying to be the main character. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of busyness going it's on just, there. Harley Quinn is clearly the lead, and they do have the sub-characters that are going to be talked about, but I, they don't have to dive right into their background necessarily. Like It could be a good movie without having to explain too many characters. It looks to me, and this is through mm-hmm. my incredibly green eyes as a film reviewer, but it looks to me as if this is going to be what a standalone for the Suicide Squad character should be. Right. right. Like if they had done this first and done this just from the way the film looks, from the way it's cut, from the lines and everything, like the humor, it looks like there's they're like, oh, we should have done this first for everybody and then waited seven years and brought yeah. it together and made it an ensemble cast. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the craziness, too. And like I love like superhero movies or anything like, you know what I mean? We, I don't want them to suck. And like DC <laughs> has let me down so many times that yeah. I'm just like I try to not put as much. Uh, how do you say it? Um, stock faith? in the movies or faith in the movies? Yeah. That's why I love Shazam so much because I was like I wasn't expecting anything. My my like you know my outcome. Well, I was expecting very little, but then it, it produced a lot, and I love Shazam. Shazam was great. So if they keep doing something like that, I mean DC's going to right. You direction. guys keep talking, and everybody keeps talking about Shazam. I guess I should kind of give it two seconds yeah. and see if it it's holds, really good holds my attention. I'm in that same book. Yeah. yeah okay. I need to. Go see it. Well, there's a spot on my couch over here after oh. if you want to hang around. Ooh, another date. date. <laughs> another date. <laughs> another date. See, there you go, Jimmy. Proof in the pudding right there. We'll all watch Shazam. Yeah, on my couch together, four of us. Lovely. Uh, who's, can um, I lay down across all three of you? <laughs> yeah, only if I can fart. I'm the tiny man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what do cool. you think, Mike? Uh, huh? Clean. Honestly, I, like I said, I'm, I'm in, I am I like Margot Robbie is a great act, actor. Robbie. Robbie. She's great. Margot Robbie is a great actor. Um, 
I think she's going to have a lot. Like, she clearly had a lot of fun making mm-hmm. this. So it there's it's it's exactly what it should be in a lot of things. But I'm glad it's taking I'm glad it's taking it's breaking the mold. Like you're saying, Mark, I'm glad that it's showcasing. It's almost showcasing that anti heroes like if you have a good heart. Yep. Essentially, maybe not all of your actions should you shouldn't be judged by the sum total of your actions. Right. Like that's what it's kind of like. She's crazy. Well, she's and like her her backstory is she was made this way. She didn't choose to be Harley Quinn. Right. Joker messed with her, fucked her up. And, and, and but she was a strong woman before. That, exactly. Right? So she's it's a psychiatrist. They're, right? they're, she's that, a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. And that's oh, that's what I like is that they're writing that side in right where yeah. they're not just it's not just mayhem and craziness so i think so she went from being a strong independent woman so to speak to being to subservient. Sucked, sucked into the whole joker thing and now she's coming out the other end that's rediscovering herself thank you for getting me there because i was gonna keep going around and <laughs> did i get you there you got me there baby. Like, name your sex tape thank you, for, <laughs> thank you for getting me there <laughs> hashtag sex tape name i came here for the little debbies i thought they were gonna be more cream pies <laughs> <laughs> Also, the name of your sex tape. <laughs> I also thought they were the going to be more cream sex pies. <laughs> <laughs> Sequel, where are the cream pies? I want more cream pies. And I do. I, I like kooky. I, I like kooky. I like weird. I like dark. I, I, I like dramedies. So I'm seeing a lot of the things that will make me go to the theater. Are we all going to go to the theater? I to think see it would it? be a yeah. fun so, movie probably. to yeah. be like. Like, you know, have a couple of drinks and go yeah. to the movie kind of thing. Like sort it's of a fun a, popcorn movie, I would like to call it. Yeah. Yeah. You're the not theater. gonna go there and like for critical acclaim, I don't think. No, but. you're not going into being like this. I would bet it this could be is like a fun movie. It's a it's a Hobbs and Shaw type It's yeah. a Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> Mike, how many cheeseburgers are you bringing to the theater? <laughs> four always. <laughs> always four. Mark has gone Mark yeah. has done that. What are you, you gonna give it out of cheeseburgers brought to the movie? Out of five <laughs> pocket cheeseburgers. Yeah. What are you gonna how give many? it, Mike? Five warm Smelly, delicious cheeseburgers in my. He pocket. always does this, and then like, and then do you really someone, do that? yeah, oh, 100 percent. People around are like, "Where's that?" It smells like McDonald's. And not like, only does he do it, so many times. I, he, he's got him in his pockets, and he walks in, and the first thing he does, he reclines his seat back, and then starts stacking, stacking the yeah. cheeseburgers <laughs> on the armrest. Oh, 100 percent. Oh was my that, god, 100. Was that the first time you've seen a movie with him, Mark? That Hobbs and Shaw? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Martin. Burger. Yeah, I brought, I've got well, years of experience oh, with those guys, burgers. Guys, hang on here. So like, <laughs> I I didn't want to talk about it because we already did, but. I went and saw Ready or Not this week. Oh, how'd you like Ooh. it? I did like it. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I liked it more than I thought I would. It's, oh, I want to see it so bad. I'd go. If it you, just sounds like a fun pop. That once again, a fun popcorn movie. Have a couple drinks too. Samira Sierra Sierra Weaver, I think. Sam, uh, Samara Samara the, Weaver. Yeah, Samara Weaver. The main character. Yes. Did you see S- the Babysitter? The Babysitter. It's a Netflix movie. It's uh, directed by Mick G. No. Oh, it's. Beautiful, I stopped she's giving Mick G too. chances when he failed me at Terminator. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it's super. It's 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 exactly what you'd love, Jimmy. A hundred percent what you'd love. It's mm. it's bloody. It's 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 funny. It's actually really That's funny. I, I heard it's a lot of dark humor. Like there's dark, a funny lot humor. of dark humor. They they don't take themselves too seriously. Like they're playing with throwbacks. the antique weapons. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. I had a point. Oh yeah. Anyway, so me and Jason went to go see it this week, Mark. I was invited to that and yeah. I didn't make it. Oh, okay. Well, you were missed because... This is a date I wanted to be invited to. Okay. Well, now <laughs> yeah, that I know... Where was, where yeah, was my know, invite? Even, yeah. No, no, not well, even... He didn't call me. Sorry. Well, I had to figure out how to buy the tickets properly. If you remember that story about buying, you know, $40 don't, worth of tickets to see Hobbs and Mike Show. And turn. <laughs> don't let me buy the fucking yeah. tickets. Buy it when you're sober. But to, to the point of this whole story here is... <laughs> Mark just looks at me like, he's never sober. When is that? <laughs> like, I, dr- I went and got a bacon double from Burger King and a double cheeseburger and came home and then Jason came to pick me up and he's like what do you and I was like yeah this is what I this is what I do this I, is what he does I bring burgers to the movie theater don't fucking tell me I can't eat in your room <laughs> Like, fuck, like this. We're arguing over real estate. If is we're that... doing the real debaters, uh, like bobblehead characters, we're, yeah. we're gonna make sure there's like a cheeseburger peeking <laughs> your out pocket. of your, yeah. p- your cardigan pocket, yeah. like <laughs> fat pockets <laughs> with like McDonald's wrappers coming up yeah, both sides. I'm, I will and pop, then like I'll... on the floor of the thing, McDonald's wrappers yeah. on the floor. Yeah, I throw them on the floor after too. So like <clears throat> whoever comes in and cleans You're up the worst after. Because <laughs> oh, he it's... he wants other people to know yeah. I, I snuck McDonald's. cheeseburgers yeah. in here, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying for your outtakes, your outrageous outtake prices. And he wants other people to say, you know what? We should have brought cheeseburgers. <laughs> this is making I'm, me irrationally I'm, angry. I'm starting a movement. Yeah. <laughs> the cheeseburger movement. Just We'll, we'll, we'll call ourselves the Randys in honor it. of Randy from Trailer Park Boys. 
<laughs> well, yes, that that brings up a different friends. different uh, meaning when no. you call yourself the yeah. Randys. No, no, I can see how that on, on the nose would be wrong. Anyways, what, okay. what are we here for again? We're here for a debate. Fucking, okay. let's get to it. All right. So um, <laughs> this this <laughs> these anecdotes have been great though. I'm not. Kidding. Um, so this week, uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that, Mike? Mike, Mark, I'm like this. <laughs> oh, you pulled away. <laughs> I pulled away. <laughs> That's me hitting the microphone right out of my fucking hand. It's because we're trying a new microphone scenario this week, so they're further away from us. Uh, so this week's debate, Martin, please tell us. I, I shot. I, set the scene. Set the scene. Martin. Set the scene. Well, the the um the I guess it came from Mark when he said like one of the topics he said uh, villains you hate to love. I think that was it. And that I was, was just, yeah, that's where it started from. And then, um, yeah, just walking with it, I was like, oh, what can we do with villains that you hate to love? And I'm like, well, what's something that people hold very dear to them? And it's their children. <laughs> so if you could pick, you know what I mean? Like, what's, what's something people love? Their kids. They, li- they really, really love their kids. And These then conversations what? are do pretty fucking... Do any of fucking... us have children? No, we No, don't. but I'm just saying what normal people do. I'm not normal. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. a normal person. Sorry, yes. But... No, the only one in the room, Mark is a stepfather. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Okay. So I couldn't, I couldn't... And that's going to play into the my my choice today. Yeah, it does. And he's the only one who actually can like yeah. talk, not out his ass yeah. <laughs> about this topic. Anyways, go on, Martin. But um, yeah, I said like, well, well, what if you leave your kids with one of these villains? Like how, wh- who would it be? And then I just started thinking, okay, well, how can we make this a thing? And then I said, okay, what if the villain was running a daycare or the bad person was running a daycare? Yes. You know what I mean? And then what's their daycare like? You know, what if there's some of the activities they do? Well, like what's the... The, uh, the setting like what does it look like inside the environment yeah the do they ideas, go on field trips the attitudes, do they do things yeah. and what, what basically what's what's the daycare like and you know why why are you dropping them off there yeah and it and it really plays to the fact that some like after researching some of these villains because we did a lot like, and it just doesn't have to be villain just yeah, a bad yeah. person in general exactly like, it could be the hero of a movie like an anti-hero but it could be it's a it's a vil- it's a bad person you know what i just realized what what the the is it the Taika Waititi movie that's coming out about the Hitler Youth Camp? Yes, yeah, Jojo Rabbit. That. Right? Oh. Let's talk about bad guys doing doing fun things with kids. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Even the bad guys have to have you know. Yeah. Even take even care. They, sometimes they smile. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they're not complete and other pieces. That of movie shit. was a cringeworthy, but I want to see it. Oh, the trailer was yeah. Like until <laughs> and, until uh, ScarJo steps on the screen, I'm like, where is this going? Why is Hitler running around a field with a young boy who's dressed Wait, like Hitler? Does ScarJo play Hitler? No, ScarJo plays the woman oh. that meets Jo. I guess JoJo is the main character. Okay. So, um, but we're not here to talk about that. Today. No, Although sorry. We'd love so, to. anyways, <laughs> bad guys doing daycare. Yeah, yeah bad that's guys it. Doing that's pretty daycare. much it. Uh, bad people. Bad, bad people. Bad people. Yeah. Bad. Well, bad guys has kind of been synonymous with yeah. Yeah. bad people. But when you go to search it on Google. But I think you're allowed to say, like, hey, guys, if it's a group of men and women. I think well, that's okay. When you search totally it on kosher. Google, you yeah. get Billie Eilish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bad guy. <laughs> I wish I could do the bad guy. Like she does. That sounded more like that a goat. very goat-like. <laughs> yeah. That's goat boy. That's, that's goat also boy. how I hear Billie Eilish. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jimmy, start us off on who you think would be a perfect bad person to run a daycare and well, why. I'm glad you said bad person, Michael. Because, why? Well, because as you throw me up a softball, <laughs> <laughs> I chose Nurse Ratchet from uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. You know, Billy, what worries me is how your mother is going to take this. Yeah. That is a terrifying lady. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but a villain or just a person doing their job? Today I'm going to be on her side and it's going to be very <laughs> uncomfortable for a lot of us. All right. Take us through it. Let, let's just be happy I didn't pick Harvey Weinstein this week, okay? <laughs> yeah. Because you have picked bad. him before. Oh, yeah. yeah. It yeah. could have been very bad for all of us. <laughs> Uh, I think she would run a possibly the most efficient daycare anyone that, has ever seen. Yeah. Okay. I'll um, give you that. I think she keeps all the walls white. It keeps children um, uh. docile. It keeps them not excited. White, it keeps them bored. White walls keep children docile? Well, <laughs> I think if there's just no fun on the walls, like you. Okay. Yeah. Like at a daycare, I imagine. I, like I don't so go your, to them. Is your daycare a formal, like, mental institution? No. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> you could but say it's, yes. It's, it's, Isn't it's every ideas daycare? derived from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think. Well, I don't know. If you have a bunch of fun stuff on the walls, children are going to be like, ooh, bright colors, fun. They're going to be excited. But if you don't do anything with anything and there's bars on the windows, children just lose hope. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have much to start with. Okay, I get where you're going. Uh, like you just want to you want to damper them down a bit. Exactly. Keep them in in line. Okay. I think on. the fact that she's a nurse is a great help on its own because children tend to have many accidents, and she is a nurse that is, 
she can like she's not just like a psychiatrist, right? She is a she's a mental health. Well, she's a psychiatric nurse. I'm assuming she has some nursing. Some yeah, yeah. So some she first probably aid. She probably has first aid training, basic yeah, first aid training. Totally. Maybe? Okay, so yes, thank you for helping me. Because <laughs> uh, as I as I said, I thought we were doing this tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> and I I still haven't watched the movie. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, we've all. He, I know he's seen the movie. It, you, you can't pick that without seeing the movie. but yeah. he just hasn't refreshed it. So go on. Um, I think TV time would be at a minimum, which again is wonderful. Uh, like how long did they let Jack watch the baseball game for? It was like for maybe five minutes, and yeah. then she shut it, wasn't it off. Long. Yeah, because he was arguing. He was trying to convince everybody in the room to watch the baseball game, if I'm not mistaken. It was a World Series. What can you do? Yeah. Uh, I think it'd be great because she would have a lot of... uh, She would let children freely be themselves while not trying to stop them unless they were trying to watch TV, which was very strange on her part. (laughs) Uh, Like, she lets that guy dance around. She lets them gamble with their cigarettes for a while, and that's nice. Do children smoke now? Uh, <laughs> yes. And vape, they, vape, they vape. Yeah. They vape. Yeah. Sweet. Like, how old is daycare? 15, 16, they smoke. Day, day. Daycare goes up to, like, I don't know. I was, like... Five? Four? Five? Well, no, no. I had after school care till about uh, 12, maybe 11. And you smoked then. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise <laughs> crack. me if, if, crack. if Jewel had a uh, Lucky Charms flavored oh uh, vape oil or whatever. <laughs> yeah, okay. So anything from like I guess like I like got primary school maybe. Well, no, like, you know what I mean. Like, like, do we have another breakdown in communication? Well, daycare. You're not figure? gonna have teenagers at daycare. You no, know what I mean? No, you're no. also not gonna have. So it's either. not gonna be. Yeah, <laughs> you're probably 11, Summer 10, down. 10 is the max age. I think she. Uh, wait, it's no, a, you're doing a great. Keep going because you're you're killing my time and that's really helping. No. <laughs> <laughs> you want us to you want us to stretch? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, back back to Jimmy. Come on, buddy. You can you can wrap this up. She would be very helpful in the fact that if any children get like unruly or not very just, you know how children get, they, they throw tantrums and stuff. She has her um, three black orderlies that will come in and escort them out. <laughs> and that's very <laughs> helpful. Jesus. They were in the movie, Mark. No, he's, 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 we're quoting off how the movie. How many people do you need to escort one child out? <laughs> children, get, you were 12. You know what it's like. <laughs> Children get very unruly. Um, and I guess worst case scenario, if they get completely unruly, you could always just take them to the lobotomy room that they have. <laughs> that would... Jeez. I have a hard time thinking you're going to get licensed. But... <laughs> oh, Jimmy. I mean, she's already got her license. That's the beauty of it. She does, but I don't know if she'll <laughs> she be. She is a cute. medical professional. Like if I send my child off first thing and, you know, if I leave my child in your care and yeah. then come back and they have a hard time putting three Speaking. words together i'm gonna i'm i'm gonna have some conversations with you that aren't gonna work well i feel her 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 skill set is limited to no kindness i feel that she might not have like i i understand your idea of rule and mm-hmm. keeping things in, in order and shit um but for empathy forgiveness kindness a simple hug perhaps i feel that nurse ratchet what might... about the hug of a straight jacket there's nothing like the hug of a straight jacket. The hug, they just keeps on hugging. <laughs> yeah. The hug you don't want hugging anymore. And don't tell me children would not have a fun in, a fun time in um, solitary confinement in the sponge room. Well, if they were all together and you left them with a giant bag of toys, I'm sure it would be amusing for a short period of it's time. It's like a less bouncy, bouncy castle. Again, no <laughs> toys. They're only allowed to gamble with cigarettes. A bouncy, bouncy castle. <laughs> we're going to the bouncy castle a now. A less bouncy, bouncy castle. <laughs> Miss Nerds Ratchet. M- M- Miss Ratchet. Miss Ratchet, I can't speak. Uh, Miss Ratchet, why doesn't this Ratchet? bouncy castle bounce? Sorry, I just want to say that this 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 place sounds like uh, this is the lone episode that I did. That it sounds like the the camp Joseph Dredd's responsible citizen training center. Oh, it sounds like shit. that's where Nurse Ratchet would be working at. Yeah, like these kids would come <laughs> out with like, like maybe she's a graduate of that summer camp. I think so. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> was, yeah. They actually got to graduate. <laughs> they have a management trainee program. Uh, anybody else want to take a Please, stab at, shit on at me. the? Oh. <laughs> It sounds very militant. Yes. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I guess if you have bad kids, you might want to Perfecto. Take, you know, if you just want them to survive the day <laughs> and not, not mess with anybody. You get to play cards. You get, them, you get them mildly sedated by the end of the day, I'm assuming. <laughs> Are they, they're, they're giving drugs to the kids? Oh, yeah. They, um, oh, man. There I is mean, it is time. part of her routine. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, if... it. it 
it is around a time I think where like you could put a pacifier in some whiskey and nobody would really shit on you too much. No, so yeah. it's like, hey, if yes. you're being unruly, here's uh, half a Valium. Shut the fuck up. My whole argument is based in the 40s or 50s. <laughs> okay, yeah, you should. <laughs> Her edu- yeah, because well, you, you have to take place in the the, the time the, of the yeah, movie. Yeah, oh, perfect. Yeah, definitely. Okay, then yes. You have a lot of leeway actually. Oh, yeah. When we come to think of that, <laughs> like everything is to scale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what that means, Mark. I still don't know what that means. <laughs> Pretty sure you don't know what daycare means either, but we'll figure that out shortly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you do see that she does let the the uh, she does let them go outside and enjoy their time, and the children can play basketball or they can see the sun. They can. <laughs> <laughs> there is a point where they will see the sun in the day. So, for those that don't know, what makes Nurse Ratched so bad? <clears throat> I <laughs> honestly, Mark, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> She might be the perfect character in a movie. She's um, a lovely human oh, being. Oh, uh, children would not be able to strangle her. Well, yeah. Why? Did, why would that happen? Well, Jack gets to do it. I uh, imagine. Yeah, yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah. Because they're kids. They're kids. They're her. kids. Yeah. So they're yeah. they're 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 shorter. And she, would yeah. never happen. I mm-hmm. I think what Mark is getting at is like what 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 is she not liked for in what the, is she? the Here's movie? What, I, what does she do? Like, there's a couple of things she does. Yeah. She is very straight. Billy specifically. Yeah, she like fucks the, with Billy the, hard. She seems to just of, straight up pick on him. Right? Yeah, like it's not. Here's the thing about Nurse Ratchet. I you know how like I've been since we, you've been watching uh, what's that that um, serial killer? Series? Oh, Mindhunter. Mind yeah, Mind Mindhunter. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I think they went to this daycare. You know what I mean? Like this is where I think this is where I think serial killers are born. It's like some strong. It's always like something with the mother or strong female presence yeah. that deberates yeah. and belittles the child and they're over from, like, and over Illinois again. Or something. And I think that's what Nurt Ratchet does, and especially to Billy, like she picks on him and berates him. But like Billy's gonna be a future serial killer. You know what I mean? Like that. Like, totally. Like the if he was, if he, well, I mean, he never even got the chance. He didn't yeah. get the chance. That is such a violent scene too. Like, oh, it's when, brutal. When when she steps on the screen, I I mean. Like there are a lot, there's a, there's a small handful of words that are four letters that just make me want to scream them because don't say it. She does such a good job. Thank you for guiding me through that. <laughs> that she does such a good job at like just She's a great actress. Like that, I forget who, but, what her name is, but that was a, a great character. Like, love scary, hate. yeah, scary. But like she just makes you hate her. Is what yeah. I, is, is uh, but that yeah, of, that's the, that's the point of point that of character. What I'm at. Hmm. And uh, I. Uh, just a, not a good well let's face it not a lot of our characters aren't really good human beings or, or <laughs> good like that's beings fun, in general right? but good would beings. she run an efficient day i don't want my kid at that daycare. see but that's <laughs> see the stipulation jimmy is would you drop your kid off at that daycare my hypothetical child absolutely <laughs> <laughs> i don't want my Any child anywhere near the week, there Martin. uh louise fletcher is the louise fletcher who, yeah yeah who played nurse ratchet shout out louise fletcher hashtag uh, nurse ratchet all, all right. right okay mark all right. <laughs> After that, yeah, you want to switch Mine's gears? Mine's gonna here? be. Yeah, there's no way to not kind of be a little bit more positive. <laughs> <laughs> it's only up from here. Yeah, yeah. Equally villainous. <laughs> dig up, stupid. Dig up. Um. Well, my daycare is called uh, Kids Guard. <laughs> what? Where did you? Where did you draw the Ran inspiration by from? Uh, the God of Mischief, Loki? Surprise. <laughs> Kids guard, Asgard, everybody got that? Yeah, I, okay. I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, so Loki, the uh, perennial uh, villain, if you will, yeah. in, uh, in many of the <coughs> Avengers MCU movies, um, and just all around bad guy, always trying to screw somebody over. Yeah. Right? One way, shape, or form. Enjoys first person, the first personal pain. game. Right? Screw yeah. his brother out of the, the crown, yep. right? Uh, screw his father out of the kingdom. <laughs> yeah. Screw everybody out of the kingdom, basically. Um, so, but I think Loki as a character would be extremely... It, it, so, I'll give you a backstory. One reason I picked Loki. Although he is kind of a... He's a bad guy, quote-unquote, villain. Um, my stepdaughter, Jordan, loves Loki. And Loki's her, like, invisible friend. So in our house, she always talks about her god of mischief, cousin Loki, <laughs> right? And so we've got into this as of late into this uh, routine of um, she'll come up at ten to nine to get a glass of water before she goes to bed, and she'll come and ask us, "Oh, were you looking over my god of mischief, cousin Loki today? What did he do?" And we have to come up with a series of tricks and pranks that Loki played on us um, while she oh, was downstairs. Awesome. That's so right. Awesome. So. We really, we kind of Kaiser so say it. Like you literally look around and be like, he uh, he threw washcloths all over the floor, and uh, 
<laughs> he took the mail and hit it. <laughs> so every day we have to come up with like three or four. And then she's like, and what else? Oh, she doesn't give up. No, she doesn't give of up. Of course. If, if I had you telling me those stories, I wouldn't give up either. So, yes. So she's a huge fan of Loki and Tom Hiddleston, like as an actor Handsome too. Mother right? mother. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of why I picked him because he's part of my household, actually. Like we literally, we had like a picture drawn of our family and Loki's in it. That's yeah. A fucking so that, how could he not be my daycare? Yeah. No. Guy, I, right. He practically kind of is. Like yeah. He, he is basically is my daycare. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, this is a no brainer, but so I look at the, the enjoyment part of assuming that Loki doesn't want to like try to kill my daughter. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's in possession of the mind stone in Loki's scepter. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. So he can Ooh. like make believe we can have like like oh, really intense cool. things for the kids, right? Yeah. Where you can be like in any kind of world and do like crazy make believe and shit like that, and it's gonna seem exactly real. Like how could you not entertain kids for hours and hours? Oh, it's so using the mind limitless, stone, right? And in addition to that, if you take Loki, depending upon where we are in the in the in the time continuum, he steals the Tesseract which has the space stone in it, which means he can travel through time too. So field trips with the kids. He can go anywhere, right? Fuck you. I he know can travel anywhere <laughs> <laughs> within the seven realms. I want to go to this daycare right, right fucking now. So, and, and then if the kids get out of line, he's got the, the mind stone, right? You get the, oh, where totally, you poke yeah. somebody and they just do his bidding for him. Like all blue right? eyes like, on you. There's no need to be mean. You just like, you're going to be good. Like yep, I'm going to be good. <laughs> Like a lobotomy. But it's a reversal, reversible yeah, lobotomy. No, no, I don't know if you know anything about lobotomies, Jimmy, but you take something out in your version, yeah. you leave something in in Mark's. Oh, so I think I think Loki's kids guard would be uh, would be a pretty awesome place to, to hang out. Oh my god, can you imagine like with Uncle Loki? Yeah. Like I I'm wondering uh, oh sorry, do you have anything? I more? mean, chances are he's gonna kind of get you working towards some towards TV conquering is. the world with him. Towards <laughs> some ends, right? But you're gonna be on his side, so it's not so bad, right? If you're one of the kids. At least you feel good about it. Yeah. Dude, dude like your 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 Loki is basically like an inter or inter intergalactic terrorist. Like he he yeah, he nine oh, eleven New York again. You know what I mean? Like he, <laughs> New York had nine eleven, and then and then New York, boom. Let's do a second version of that and kill thousands of people. Some may be children. Some may be children at daycare. Well, yeah, okay. at daycare. Okay, but we are uh, like there is an allowance but for this the fact is, that everybody we've picked hasn't killed a child so we are assuming that they're safe with him. i have not seen loki directly kill a child i have not seen but the North actions Ratchet. that he did yeah. brought about okay. that happening you know what i mean like it, he not he didn't directly do it but it, the action still like you know what i mean you're still guilty of yeah, doing it I, but then he, there's the good in loki right like loki he is, tried to prevent thanos from taking the stone and he's you know so only, for his, own, only for his own only no, for his own gain only for his own gain i'm to with take martin it. here but no man. I think there's a there's a piece of good in Loki because as much as him and Thor, like he wants to kill Thor, he still sort of helps Thor. Yeah, and they, right. They're... So you want that little glimmer of of good deep down inside of somebody that's evil. I will side on the fact that Martin and Jimmy are pointing out a good point, but you can build on what you're arguing, Mark. You can build on that little glimmer inside of him. You can there's there's not all hope is lost. I guess yeah. is and honestly, if I'm leaving him as in charge of my child, um, and, and he's gonna make her part of his his minions, his to, army <laughs> to take over the world and the the, the realms, I, then so be it. I think she's on. Uh, you know, she's gonna have fun. She's have a good time. <laughs> Just uh, don't forget to write. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Don't forget. I wouldn't drop my kids off there. I'm never gonna see my kid again. He's gonna she's gonna be conquering <laughs> the galaxy with Loki. But see, my kid. That's she'd be so happy that that's she wouldn't care to see yeah, me again, see, right? Yeah. She'd be so immersed in this world that I, that would be like her absolute dream come true to she, be wow. swept away with Loki forever. That's so, really nice, man. Yeah, it's it's a, it's huh. a, I, I, I don't know, I, man. I, like I would I would argue that the thousands the people who like in the the fictional people who died during that attack in New York would beg to differ and would argue different that Loki is not a good guy and we are not leaving our kids with him. A man cannot be judged by one act alone. Like Marvel. Uh, there was two. He, he attacked Earth twice. He had the one Martin, and then the second time. I love you, but I don't <laughs> judge you on not on you not knowing what to scale means. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so like, that's so a joke. Anyways, that has that's nothing joke. to do with the argument, that's Mike. My, that's nothing my argument. argument. Thanks no, for coming, Mike. No, uh, do you want to actually put in some two cents here? Hang on. Don't get angry. <laughs> Calm down. Don't flip your board game. 
what I'm the point of what I'm saying is, is he said, "Don't judge a man by one single action." That was the that was the joke. Don't judge you. So by... my 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 argument was he attacked Earth twice. He didn't just do one. He did okay. two attacks on Earth. He did two, <laughs> two, not one single one, but two <laughs> attacks on Earth. And your point is, he didn't understand from his actions. The so first time, so he's got he the second learn. time, and then he didn't learn the third time, and then well, maybe the fourth. We'll see. And you know, he's got the tesseract now with the so yeah. Uh, so that's There's evil. That's that evil Loki. That's evil Loki yeah, who has a tesseract now. Who's alive, by the way? Oh, yeah. Out there just okay. waiting to He's destroy everywhere. the world. You never know. Okay. But anyways, and, you know, I think it'd just be great. Uh, that's that's my argument. Don't get I, me wrong. So And, and then to, to sort of wrap this all up, to tell you about how, how important he is in my family's life. <laughs> I got a Father's Day card from Jordan uh, last Father's Day. And the sentiment she gave to me was, I love you more than Loki. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Nice. You dink. Now I have to vote for you. <laughs> Fuck. He's using the sympathy card, Martin. I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> that's a, that's an awesome story, though. No, I've that oh. that's. And plus, he's a god. And it's he has a the nuts, riches right? of Asgard. Yeah. And it's going to be a pretty dope place to hang out, right? Yeah. Instead of a white place with bars on the window. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the bathroom from Saw. He's making it look like whatever he wants. That's true. Right? Exactly. <laughs> Touche. Uh, Martin. Okay, it's my you. turn. Love you guys too. I love you, Martin. Don't I love Loki. I never want to just do this I don't again. think I would leave my child with Loki. <laughs> but I mean, that's just my maybe my, my Loki doesn't want your child. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ooh. You don't qualify. <laughs> that's okay cuz I'm bringing him to a better it's place. A I'm bringing him to a better Loki place. Loki runs like the Montessori of Asgard. You fucking took it right out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> going to be like this is a Montessori school apparently we it's won't It's invite make it only. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a rigorous process of <laughs> application. He's got like, he's got like Do I need one of those faster than light ships to get from Earth to Asgard? You do. You need the you need the Bifrost. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah. to drop your yeah. kid off in the morning. <laughs> it's very expensive to keep a Bifrost outside of your home. It's, Heimdall. It's, uh, yeah. Oh, Heimdall's dead, so no more Bifrost. <laughs> Upkeep on a Bifrost is very expensive. Very, even, even more than a Mercedes SUV. <laughs> how much How much does it cost to attend this daycare? Is it like uh, 10 straw pennies? Or? Yeah, yeah we, have, we have an incredibly dark and morbid reg- regimented training center from Jimmy. And we have a Montessori school from Mark. But still, a training center for Loki's <laughs> Yes, minions. exactly. Hit, still hit, a training center. Yeah. Montessori, Montessori on the outside, but yes. a training center training on the inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. We're, we... I like it, though. I like your arguments. I like the fact that you like that you brought in the Power Stones, which I never thought you would do. But I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. He does have the ability to entertain kids. And, you know, the I, I think the Tesseract's a cool thing where you can go anywhere and go to any field trip in an instant. Because, like, the field trips are a hard thing to do. Especially if you only have like what, like eight hours with a child, but this way, right? You boom. got ten oh, kids attached Lord, to a yeah. rope, walking in tandem yeah. with their buddy. You don't get very far. Yeah. Poof! I like that. I like that. Those where, are cool. Where arguments. do you want to go, children? And how evil do you want to be, Martin? Tell me. Uh, tell me who you decided would be. I know who you decided actually, yes. and I can't wait. Uh, I went for the 1983 movie Scarface, and the <laughs> character is Tony Montana. Okay. Do you want to play rough? I can see how you were judgmental of my choice. (laughs) Uh, Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Uh, So he opens up a daycare because he's long retired from the drug game. And this is more of his passion project. (laughs) He doesn't need money with children. And it's called Uncle Tony's Imaginarium for Children. Um, So what it takes place, he converts his old mansion into a giant daycare center. And, uh, you know, Tony doesn't live by many rules. Does he but patch the bullet holes? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Everything's good. Everything's and good. vacuum up all the blow. Um, so, but he doesn't have many rules. We know that Tony Montana is very free spirit. He does, he like, he does a lot of crime. Uh, but the one rule that he does stick by is... He's very linear. He do, yeah, linear. <laughs> he doesn't hurt kids. He will not hurt kids. That's the one rule that he does yeah, stick by. No, totally and he right, loses yeah. his life doing that because yeah. he, he sticks up for the kid, the mother and the yeah. two kids. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Proof he sacrifices blood. his own well-being for these children. And um, I think since him and Elvira can't have kids of their own, this is why he opens up the daycare because he does like to be around kids. And, you know, he, he also has that scene um, with Manny in the pool when Manny's trying to pick up that girl. Hey. And he says to the two kids, he's you like, really, to them, you know, yeah. He's Look like, over you know, here. he's just this hey, man. having a good time with the kids. that lady. <laughs> Uh, some of the things that'll be the daycare. We'll stick his tongue out. Um, <laughs> that's the line. That's the line. He sticks his tongue out. Beach, uh, lesbian. <laughs> Go on. I'm sorry. Okay. So some of the little anemones. Anemones is that the word? Yeah. Uh, it is now. 
Amenities? 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 An enemy is where uh, that's Nemo lives. That's where Nemo lives. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I live in an anemone. Amenities. <laughs> Anyways, uh, some of the things that'll be there, uh, he'll have like those power wheel cars, but they'll be like uh, based on the cars from the movie. So the 1963 Series 62 Cadillac. Oh. And the Porsche pow, 928. Pow, power wheels, pow, pow, power wheels. And everyone loves power wheels. As a kid, I remember one of my oh, neighbors yes. had one. And I love riding in it. It was so cool. Um, so this is a, co- it's a good thing because there's only two power wheels, right? And there's a bunch of kids. So one thing share. that'll teach you exactly teach them how to share, which is a good life lesson to learn as a child. Everyone who gets a turn, you don't take your turn, you yeah, don't wait take, your turn. Uh, wait. <laughs> uh, there'll be a, a jazzer size studio cause it's the eighties, <laughs> right? In the house. Uh, it'll be modeled after that nightclub that they go to, but it'll uh, be like a, a fun. Yeah. Yeah. But it'll be a fun, like little activity for the kids to dance with all the teachers and stuff like that. And to know to um, do some cardio like they, they they do some things to keep them in shape you know just not just you know sit around touch screens all day stuff like that um, I agree I guess it, it helps the kids <laughs> develop motor skills you know it helps them get into shape um, and the song that we'll be playing in this studio the whole time is push it to the limit <laughs> push, push it, it to, to the, the limit, limit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's when he buys the Mercedes and the Tiger. That's when he that's starts the whole musical becoming, montage, yeah, we, right? Beca- when he becomes like yes. the boss. When yeah. he starts pushing it to the limit. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy. Um, <laughs> there'll be an outdoor garden for the like that he converts into the yard that the kids can you know help maintain. And since it's like Florida, there'll be a lot of orange trees, stuff like that, and that oh. they'll use for snack time. Vitamin C, baby. Um, and at the drop-off area, um, you know, at the lobby of the house, there'll be a spinning globe, and it'll say, the world is yours. So that's what the kids, the first thing that the kids will see, to give them that little inspiration, be like, you can do anything you want. Um, So the core mission statement for um, Uncle Tony's (laughs) Imaginarium for Children is uh, first you get the money, then you get the power, then you get uh, the man or woman or person you wish to be with. Uh. (laughs) But... It's a mouthful. I'm glad you, I know you're going to ask Mike, and I'm glad you, you're going to ask that question. How do you get that money? Well, uh, you got to have a good work ethic. Got to have a good work ethic, and I think part of that is balance. So balance between work and play, and that's something that they'll teach here at uh, Uncle Tony's Imaginarium for Children. Uh, <laughs> like trademark, so, like, trademark he, by so the here's way. Here's what's going to happen. Balance that well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But retired now. Retired now. Out of the game. Out of the game. Oh, so anyway, so <laughs> like balance, like a scale. <laughs> There's that. Uh, Mark, that's coming later. That's coming okay. later. That's coming later. <laughs> so Jesus the way Christ. he'll do that is like there'll be small groups of children that will be selected throughout the day to help with meal preparation. So some kids will be doing an activity. Slave labor. <laughs> no, but it's just like teaching them like, you know, I responsibility know, and be like teaching direction and instruction. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. How to follow that. Um, and, you know, there'll be like morning, morning snack, lunch and then afternoon snack. So there'll be three times a day where small groups of kids will go and help and do this responsibility thing. Uh, so all these kids are going to be an island when they get older. Oh, they're going to learn how to cut. They're going to yeah. learn how to cook. It's going to be, be a good. great time. Good. Cut and vegetables you know, one or of the, cocaine. One of the activities <laughs> yeah. that I... Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Mike, cut vegetables, Mike. cut the product. The world, the world is theirs. The world, the world is, is theirs. theirs. They can do whatever they want. It just, You know what? Let, Uncle Tony's just teaching them the life skills. Let me take away your fruits and vegetables and so, substitute it with some cocaine. Here's, what I, here's the, the, the funny part. Like, uh, okay. So I, one of the activities that I had was like, you know, they're going to do some baking of... Uh, You're Cuban gonna bake, cookies, okay. <laughs> baking of Cuban cookies, but in the shape of M16 machine guns yes. that they have yes. in the movie, and they'll be <laughs> the kids will be sprinkling uh, sh- uh, powdered sugar on them. Of course, they you know will. why? Because there's always there's always a mound of powdered sugar at Uncle Tony's. Yes, right? yes. always a yeah. mound of powdered sugar. Um, so the food that they serve at this place will be mainly Cuban because that's what Tony Montana is, is from Cuba. So. Cuba. And he hires the chef from uh, that restaurant that he worked at, at the very beginning. Oh, that little shitty. The, yeah, back, to make all yep, the Cuban yep, food for the yep. kids. So it's going to be a lot of beans, rice, fresh fruits, vegetables, maybe some Cuban sandwiches. I don't know yet, mm. but that's on the menu. Who doesn't like a good Cuban sandwich? Um, so, and then uh, what I this had is a turning kid, into like a like a island getaway. Well, it's Uncle Tony's Imaginarium for children. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I hear here's uh, I like this part. Uh, story time. Um, so basically what would happen here is they would read uh, the child's book written by Tony Montana uh, called Tony and the Hassa, <laughs> which is loosely based on his life. And he tells the story of a young peasant who rose his way up from the ranks from nothing to become the greatest knight in the land. Wow. And he slays the Hassa monster and rescues Princess Elvira. Wow. Uh, what did it say here? Uh, so if you didn't know what a Hassa is, Mike, it's a pig that don't flash straight. Yeah. Takes too much. You a fucking yeah. Hassa. <laughs> That's when he's in the car dealership. And Elvira is the vampire lady with the big boobies. <laughs> <laughs> Mistress Michelle of the dark. Yes. 
That's uh, the Elvira, yes. <laughs> so field trips Elvira. since it's Miami. You know. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. We get but, sidetracked easily. Here. Yeah. What? But Fish? field trips since it's Miami, like what he does, he used to have the tiger, but he realized, you know, he can't take care of it. So he donates it to the Miami Zoo. Yeah. And that's one of the field trips they take because he always wants to visit his tiger. Sure. And see him again. So it's like, hey, kids, check out my tiger. Check out my tiger, man. Check out my tiger, man. <laughs> Hey, no Tiger, problem, say hello to my little friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's what it is. <laughs> say hello. I'm out. Mic drop. I'm out. The <laughs> you jumped me on the gun on that one. I had it written down here. I had it written down. I was like, say hello to my little friends. <laughs> But anyways, oh, that was a good setup, Martin. That was per- I could, yeah. Uh, almost like we planned it. Yeah, almost. <laughs> pirate sees a pirate. But like uh, one thing uh, that I have to, I'll just end off on this. But yeah. b- booking field trips will be easy for Tony because he also owns uh, Montana Booking Agency for That's vacations. Right. Yes. So I mean, it's you know the world is theirs. Fuck, you studied this movie. I'm super impressed. I just watched it and studied. But yeah, like you were, yeah, that was you- my plan. <laughs> <laughs> did I say? Did I say Saturday to you? Did I? Uh, the first text was, but the most recent one was Friday. Okay, all right. So I did correct myself because I'm just trying to be a better person. Sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. I was confused yeah. too, Jimmy. I was looking. I, I was, thought we were doing it Sunday, and then I was actually looking damn. forward to yours the most because I was like, "How is he going to sell this? Like, this is a hard, like Nurse Ratchet is a hard sell." And I was looking forward to. Oh, I think he did a fantastic yeah. job at it. I just <laughs> think he, he like. Oh. <laughs> do, 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 do. Don't worry. If this I, is this is also the song that'll be playing <laughs> when they're making the meal prep. At Martin, if I had one one qualm with yours, <laughs> only one. Uh, it would be how do you plan on keeping Tony's past life out of his current life? Like I know he's retired, but yeah. what about the people who are looking for him? It's or an his addict. Always an addict. His, oh, well, yeah. he's like okay. So what it's I thought just was when like, you think you're out, <laughs> yeah, they pull me back in. Back in. <laughs> but here in the thing, like so. In, in mind, he doesn't die. He's sort of like, the, it, if there's one thing I learned from gangster movies is everything has a price. So this he just finds true, that yeah. price with Sosa to be like, okay, I want out. How much is going to cost me? Let's, like let's negotiate. Wick. Exactly. There's a price. Okay. That's what he does. He okay. finds it. They find it and boom, they hit that. Because right. I mean, like, I don't know how much he makes, but on the first deal alone uh, of the cocaine run, he makes 75 million. And that's the first deal. So I don't know how many years progress or months, but like 75 million worth of cocaine. And then so what if it's is, another deal, right? This is like if Tony took a different path in. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have. So, so he made the sequel. one deal and then all of a sudden, boom, I'm out. So all the so drug the, dealing was just to, 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 to build capital for his day. For, for, <laughs> that, that's, Mark, I said. That's what I was pa- getting Passion at. project. Passion <laughs> yeah. project. Because okay. he does like. Kid, like in the movie, he mentions kids so many times. Like he talks to Elvira. He's like, uh, you have kids. You want to do kids? I want you to be the mother of my kids. Oh, he's he, very He says that all the time. Yeah. And like. Even in the car when he's talking, like, I don't, the one thing I don't do after doing a line of coke, like, one thing I don't do, I don't kill kids. I don't kill kids. I'm not going to do it. He just, like, Mark, I think, I think he's the safest. Out of all the choices, he's the one who will keep your kids the safest. It's nice to know down. he won't murder my son. Is that, no. is that on the brochure? It's on the brochure. <laughs> I don't he will, kill kids. He will, he will die. He will die for your kids. I'll die for your kids. That's I think that's on the brochure. <laughs> okay. That doesn't so. make me feel better. <laughs> um... I, I thought of a slogan for your school, Tony Montana's school, Imaginarium for, what was it? Fun. Children. <laughs> that's, the, oh. that's, that's a big board for a name. It's a big old mark. Um, but he has a big old house. So. He has a big old house. Okay. Mm. So, um, but Is it just it, at his house? He converts the mansion yeah, into, oh, into he, a daycare. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm listening to him. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, Jimmy. I'll let it pass because I didn't listen to you during Thanks Killing. So no, 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 no. I get that. Uh, blood Rage. <laughs> blood Rage, Thanks like Killing. Some sort of slogan <laughs> like <laughs> Tony Montana's blah, 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 where, where it's always snowing. Like some, oh. some little clever play into like. I was going to previous... actually I was going to say I didn't want to say it, but I was going to say like, oh, he takes him on a lot of ski trips. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm getting at. But you just did it yeah. better. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I have one qualm. I also I, have... I'm concerned okay. with my my friends give my kids too much sugar. <laughs> <laughs> they yes. have sugar fights. It's just loose sugar fights. around powdered sugar. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what does powdered sugar smell like? <laughs> I have I have one just one qualm and mm-hmm. you, you didn't bring it up. And and his temper towards his sister mm-hmm. is somewhat questionable if this was real time. Because the temper was never towards his sister. It was towards people trying to have sex with his sister. Yes, totally. But his resolution to that was to shoot her. 
I don't think. No, she didn't. He, someone yeah. else shoots her. Who she, does she get shot by straight bullets? Is that how that? Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's that's at the end, right. right? Yeah, sorry, I'm confused. He doesn't kill her. Yeah. He kills his best no, friend right. because sorry. he's sleeping with his sister. He thought they were just fucking. No, I know, I know. But he, then they get yeah. married, and he realizes his mistake. He's like, oh fuck. Well, I I didn't know. They I'm were clearly love. confusing something else in my head with with Tony. Doesn't seem like a very patient man, though. No, but he expects with kids done. with kids with kids with kids with kids. You're you're. But I mean, he's not he he's not need... doing it all alone. Like there's a team there. Like but I said, there's the other teachers. Could he get frustrated in the teachers then? Yeah, I feel that his method of solving problems is to make those problems to fall in a helicopter. They go away. <laughs> uh, that wasn't his. That was Sosa's, I know that was Sosa's, Sosa's method. You call his. that a snack? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he only wants the best for your children. Call only wants the snack. best for your children. That's true. It a lot would of be turnover there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where's, where's, where's Rico? Uh, Rico who? <laughs> I don't know who you mean. <laughs> Sorry. Any, what are you talking about? Yeah, what, are you, what you talking about, man? <laughs> what you talking about, man? <laughs> I love Recall. that. I love that movie. It's one of my favorite movies. I just love that. I love gangster movies. So, dude, I can I'm watch like, that what, movie. What kind of what kind of gangster can I put in a daycare? Let's put Tony Montana. I can watch that movie so many times. I, it's it's one of those like it's got so many. It it takes place in so many different places that it really tells a lot of different stories, not just about him, but about like different parts of the whole Cuban migrant. I don't know if I want to send my kid to Florida. (laughs) (laughs) It's not not Tony's place. It's Florida. (laughs) Because a Florida man. (laughs) That's what I was going to say. Tony's just going to raise a bunch of Florida men. So, Jimmy, in this situation, like, we all live in wherever the daycare is. Because you're sending your kid to this daycare. So, I mean, like, you're just, you live in Florida. So, that's your your decision. (laughs) Damn it. That's that's on you, Jimmy. You move to Florida. (laughs) I like, maybe I'm really old, Martin. (laughs) You're retired, and your kids are fifty. We won't Maybe I them. want to we do bath salts. Them. Okay. <laughs> I was I was just watching on Colbert this about Florida. There's a retirement complex called the Villages. It has the highest STD rate in all of North America. I think that's all of Ew. all. That's all retirement centers, though. Ew. All not just yeah, not just sorry, that, but yeah. all retirement centers have a very high STD rate yeah, because like oh, lots they, of they, they don't care. They don't care anymore. They don't right? care. They're just oh like we're on the way out. Might as well. Just, yeah. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. Who cares about condoms? Who cares? Who cares about HPV? Just fuck, fuck, fuck. That's that's all. They do in those retirement yeah. complexes. That will not be happening oh at God. Uncle Tony's Imaginarium no. for Children. Do you want to know what happened in my daycare? <laughs> what happens at your daycare, Mike? My daycare would be run by a maniacal psychopath. <laughs> I uh, picked Heath Ledger's Joker. Oh, and by the way, the suit, it wasn't cheap. You ought to know, you bought it. <laughs> I can't wait to see how you sell this. <laughs> <laughs> so why, why so serious? <laughs> so I, I decided to approach this from aside from all of the violence and mayhem and everything that he creates he's a pretty playful guy if you look at it from a bird's eye view he's He's the joker Joker, right so you start with the title right so he's into tricks he's into escapades he is by any definition pretty fucking silly if you think about it take away the obsession for murder and just isolate (laughs) but you can't take away the murder is pretty silly i'm not saying it's not silly but what i'm saying is is if we're pulling characteristics out of a bad person and trying to argue them for why they would be great in a daycare okay i'll give you that that's what i'm arguing i'm arguing the fact that he is very whimsical and very playful so he has a childlike mind he's clearly gone through some some trauma that has delayed the ability to process empathy that is his biggest missing piece i believe and so that that that's also downfall but when you have childlike minds and a childlike educator there's a better communication going on there right where someone's walking in going i have a degree i know what i'm doing someone who speaks the same language which is fun and silly so you've got a very fun and silly environment that allows children to behave the way they want to behave and they're not constricted into an environment where they have to be a Montessori ace or, you know, live in this silver spoon. Cause Tony, Tony Montana's would be kind of silver spoon, right? Like we, we can agree on that. Or this white wall watch. Oh, it's going to be a top of the line facility. It's going to be a top, of the, line it's be a top yeah. of the line facility. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Right? Public school. So, Only the so best. Mine, mine is more of like, I would say a inner city kind of, off the wall, very free form, no previous education required. Daycare for wayward youth. Daycare for wayward youth, right? <laughs> okay. Like, the, like lo- lower on the t- like lower on the social scale. Um, More of a court ordered daycare. You kind of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot. There's a lot of those court ordered daycares today. You know what I mean? There's a lot, a lot. All right, so that, that, that's, that's where I'm approaching it from. So second to that, thought about the theme. 
right? What kind of theme goes great with a Joker? Well, he's a clown. Where yep. do clowns oh, yeah. come from? The fucking circus. Okay, yeah. that's what so, this daycare will be. <laughs> that's in exactly what it is, but it'll be a circus theme, right? Cool. So imagine like. Okay, so riding mm-hmm. elephants normally at a circus is pretty kind of boring, right? But riding elephants at Jokers would be through the parking lot, stomping on the cars, right? Like it's all about mayhem and and panic and and craziness, but flipping it in a way that it doesn't. I would enjoy that as a right? kid. Like think about it, right? <laughs> like the rules. But that that's it, not you were arguing. You're the parent. <laughs> Would you oh, send sorry. your child sorry. there? You, you're, you're not the kid I would in the send situation. myself there. <laughs> yeah, you're not the kid in the situation, Mark. You're the, the parents. I'd room? still rather live in Gotham than Florida, though. <laughs> Once again, Jimmy, you made that choice. Damn is it. There, is there room for me here, Mark says? Can I stomp on elephants, too? Um, so, yeah, you've got that. You, then, you know, you, you've, you've got the trapeze. You've got, you've got the clown atmosphere. You've got face painting, right? You've got balloon art. You've got all the tricks that he pulls in as a clown being part of your everyday activity. So you're going to learn a new thing each day. What do you learn? What, well, you're, you're learning all of the fun, cool things that come with the circus, right? Safe, so safe cracking. So, <laughs> yeah, safe cracking. Uh, well, I, I, and I'm getting to that. Marksmanship. I'm, I'm, marksmanship. I am yeah. getting to that because C4 he is. placement. Yeah. They're, 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 these, these are all your badges. Proper wiring for bombs. <laughs> uh, I thought this would go so much better when I got to this part. How to, how to sneak in explosives yeah. to an yeah. event. <laughs> But the, I mean, I know uh, these aren't everyday practical, you know, things to, to put on one's resume, but they do come in handy. I mean, like it'd be better to know than to not know is all I'm saying. To know how to make a bomb? Well, yeah, I'd rather know how to make a bomb because then I know how to defuse a bomb. I think we just got put in a list. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we none of us want to make bombs if you're if you're that panicked about go, that. Go back to the big top daycare. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Anyways, so face painting, big top daycare. Okay. You got a lot of fertilizer in here, man. Um. Hang on here. I gotta catch up. It's on from my... Martin's gardening. Yeah. <laughs> right. Back back to the Tony f- Montana ships it north. <laughs> back to the freedom of expression stuff too. Um, coloring, <clears throat> putting things on the wall. Like everything is allowed to be whatever it is. There's if 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 a child at Joker's daycare colors outside the lines, it is encouraged. I don't think there are any lines at Joker's daycare. <laughs> yeah, we pushed there's them just, all. Yeah. No, yeah. They're when just I, color everywhere. When I taught them how to disassemble a, a Mac a Mac ten, that's that's kind of when all the rules went out of the out of the house. Uh, his curious nature, he likes to push the limit, so allowing kids to pursue their own curiosity. Like I'm Push looking, it to the limit. Push it exactly to the fucking limit. I'm looking at it from a perspective that that Joker isn't going to stunt anything. Joker's going to allow for a lot of creativity and a lot of... Uh, he's he's going to break down the, the limits that normally try to be pushed upon, I would imagine, in a normal daycare. And not so much that's a bad thing, but just allowing it to be that much more open. Um, now, there are things that he would be great at teaching lessons at, for example, showing children that uh, accumulation of things is a bad idea by burning all the fucking money, right? Yeah. He isn't tied to any sort of tangible thing. He's 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 free, right? So, so there's fire now at this, like a live fire? Oh, yeah, fire. yeah. Well, I mean, a barrel, right? A 45-gallon drum with some money in it. Is, we're not, we're not going to burn, you know, hundreds of millions of gang members' money here. Um Another great example that he could teach is about how life kind of really isn't fair and competition breeds competition, which is a good thing where he makes the two gang members fight over who's going to be part of his team. So there's going to be a battle royale. Well, no, 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 I'm just I'm saying he can teach from experience. I'm not saying that. that How does he teach that to the kids, though? He tell these. He tells them the story about. Yeah. How about two <laughs> inmates beating each other to death? Well, I'm, obviously, to get a spot on my obviously the fucking moment has to come up. It's not going to be like, hey, kids, sit around for story time with But the no, Joker. but I'm asking, like, how would the Joker explain what you're trying to convey to these kids? By by just telling him what I just told you. So beating two inmates. Yeah, like. It, killing each other. Yes, yeah. To get a roster on the spot. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> they so wouldn't, the will, kids wouldn't do it. But. If I have two children and there's only one spot left at your school. Yes. Okay. Yes, the two of you. Then you have one kid in the Joker school. Yeah. <laughs> the other one is, is, is shit out of luck. He's on the streets. Um, and and yeah. So I basically my my just to, to summarize here, my whole look at this was to take the traditional side of childcare out of the equation and allow for madness and anarchy and curiosity to. Be expressed in its most extreme way. That's lovely. Yeah, yeah. like one of those hippie daycare. Exactly, but with <laughs> just those a, turn out so well. A guy who's got no fucking communication issues whatsoever. That's right? Like, great. You know, and I mean, like he's 
he would def- so. he wants to eat ketchup sandwiches for lunch. Let him eat ketchup sandwiches for lunch. That's that's what I'm saying, right? Like like the the big daddy. I was gonna say it's like big daddy, right? Where there's there's the he's gonna become the smelly kid in school. That's what your that your kid's gonna be if you bring him here. Let him become the smelly kid. He's gonna become the stinky kid, and that's fine. Call himself whatever he wants to call. So many other stinky kids, nobody will be able to tell who's the stinky kid. Are they all? Yeah, everyone. Do they show up stinky or do they just leave stinky? They leave smelly for sure. I think that's uh. <laughs> Didn't Joker's all of his henchmen have like fun names too, so they can just all give themselves nicknames? And... Definitely, you're like you, Bozo, and yeah. yeah, like all the, the 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 opening scene with all the different clowns in it. I think yeah. is what you're referring to. Definitely, yeah. It's a it it's a fun forward. Um, responsibility, nowhere to be found, <laughs> uh, it, environment that breeds ar- ar- artistry and creativity, and and, and by mm. expressing it in some of the w- weirdest ways. Did we watch the same you know, Joker on the yeah, screen? We, we did, yeah. But we were both we were both touched differently by Heath Ledger's performance. It is just a, I ju- uh, it is the Joker's seize the daycare. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I was trying to come up. I was oh. trying so hard to come up with a flashy name for it, and then I was thinking about like nap time and stuff. And I'm like, well, everybody who gets put to bed in Batman just gets shot, so there's no way to really bring nap time into it. But I figured, who wouldn't want to go to a circus themed day- daycare though? I mean, when I I took health and child care in high school for a brief minute, only because I thought there would be a lot of girls in it, which there were, but I sucked the course. Um, anyways, I had to I had to pick the daycare day. For like a theme, and my yeah. uncle's a clown in the circus, so I brought him in, which is where this whole ah. idea started to come from. I brought in a clown to a childcare facility once when I was in high school. That's essentially what this is. So I just looked at how much fun it was for those kids. I know I took it kind of from a serious approach because I'm like anything this this guy does. Like traditionally, he put two boats full of inmates. On the river, he was about to kill a bunch of children on a boat with yeah. their families. No, nope. all the inmates. <laughs> At least they're with their families. You yeah. know what I mean? No, I guess well, they're together. Yeah, <laughs> he does. He does appreciate a good neutral family. <laughs> like I mean, I just, I just don't feel that. I don't what feel you're safe. saying the Joker's not going to do that. Like I think he instead of he's going to berate these kids. I think Batman's going to thwart your date. Yeah. Here. Probably he'll come in and hit, hit he'll come it, in yeah. and just and just stomp that thing like nope this is a bad idea let's just close up shop just walks in with papers send and them legal all forms. to the imaginarium but if we know anything the Joker will get caught he'll go to Arkham he'll escape and go right back to the daycare because it's the first thing and on his fucking and he'll mind. get caught again and then he'll go back to Arkham it'll be a cycle that he won't there'll be, able be a to go. substitute for a brief period of time Harley Quinn will fill in for him ah uh, she's that emancipated nice. now well so no can't do that yeah, all right well <laughs> I, I, think, I think you should be able to take like the the other iterations of the Joker and incorporate them into your daycare like with nicholson well and well like the, like the old like the old yeah i was gonna say like excuse the romero's old you could come up with some really big elaborate machine to do something that like you know where they strap batman to like the table yeah and there's a laser and there's a slow moving <laughs> conveyor belt like you could like you could have the simplest tasks drawn out into these literally long <laughs> <laughs> annoyingly <laughs> slow like it's snack time kids Look up at the top of the, you know? Yes, yeah. Every, every, everything, yeah, I totally yeah, get what I'll you're just, saying. I'll say this. I think the Joker went to Jimmy's daycare, and that's why he's the Joker. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Because of Nerd Ratchet. That's what happened. He got, he got, he got berated to the point. Ratchet raises fun children. <laughs> well, these, this was the, the, uh, the result of it. But I also, like, to to if if you're looking at anything, like, the new Joker's pulling from the Long Halloween and a couple other comic books they're pulling from, which is... Really, at the core of every Joker is, I think, a madness. child madness. But I think a child who was left behind. So I think his sympathy for children, for the fact that he was damaged as a young boy, I think that's going to play into my well run. Well, not just damaged as a young the boy, the childhood but he didn't have. The childhood he didn't have is going like to come Michael Jackson. through. <laughs> but it doesn't. That I was doesn't. Thinking that <laughs> didn't want to say it. Didn't, didn't want to say it. That's what See, I'm here for. It's the child. One of us always will. <laughs> It's the child that he didn't have, and he's never gonna get it. So he takes his revenge out on the world. That's that's what the Joker is. Exactly. So and then if, he's gonna, if, like if we, if he's given a chance to run a daycare, he's like, oh, the, the one thing I never had, I get to have, and I get to make it as fun and kooky and crazy as possible. I can buy into that. You know, I like I didn't. There wasn't like A, B, C. You know, one, two, three. This is why. Yeah. And like yours is Martin. Yours is very well laid out in that fact that like there's like oh yeah you like you went. Into the, like you're you're talking about the restaurant in the movie like those are things that like yeah I would never think to pull from no right? I'm just but okay I I'm just saying that like um like I love the Joker I just as, a, as, a, yeah. as a as a like what like part of the the 
like because I used to work at a daycare. So part of the things that daycare does is they they teach children's important lessons. Like I don't think the Joker will do that for the kids. You had an unfair advantage. <laughs> <laughs> like they, they're like uh, the kids. They're they're at a very young age. They're very malleable. Well. Like uh, especially at a young age, right? So the youngest we had was about three or four years old, and at that age they're very malleable. And and Drew, I just Drew, as, yeah. bit, Bringing him to this, I feel like it's, it's just going to be stretching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like he Kirby. Might, yeah, and I do, under, I do see that. I totally see. I that think they're just going to bring him in that wrong direction of just, you know what I mean? Like it just, it's, at, it's like so no influential at this age. If you give him too much elasticity yeah. with these brains, he might create an Asgardian army. Well, like this Mark is, is this is here. this is how Batman's future or Nightwing's villains are created. Yes, in their camp. It might, yeah, I'm. Uh, we're all creating some sort of assembly <laughs> line. Like Mark is the only one who came from a responsible place, where the three of us over here are like how do we turn these children into the worst versions of themselves? <laughs> well, no one really did that. Even Mark has an assembly. No, Mark yeah. wants to create, like Mark's Loki is going to create eventually. Like he has, he's very self-centered, right? He's like got Loki. dark elves to do his bidding and yeah. all that kind of stuff. He doesn't need kids. But, yeah. but you just said, he's, he pro- he'll probably conquer the world. Like you just said. Uh, yeah. I, I think he said he's more you know okay I mean? with Jordan being taken. <laughs> he's like, yeah, if you're going with anybody, might as well be Loki. Uh, I smell a great vote coming around the corner. This is going to be a tough guys. one. This is going to be a real tough one because I started with Mark, but I'm now torn between Mark two lovers, and two lovers in a <laughs> lovers in a dangerous podcast. Hold on, I have to. Uh, yeah, I got to bring up my note thing here too. Mikey so. got a do, kick in the darkness till it bleeds daylight. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, this is tough. I don't know who to pick. Whose quote is that, Mark? Is that that's from Lovers in a Dangerous Time? Oh, yeah. I'm clearly not listening to the song close enough. All right here. Just to say, like none of uh, none of these <laughs> are good choices. No, like, neither is mine. Mine's a terrible. Like they're all terrible choices. It's just it's so hard to pick the best terrible choice. What's so great about this is we're arguing something that nobody ever intended to happen. <laughs> so that's why it's so much fun, I right? Know. Like nobody's writing, "Hey, Joker should be in a daycare scene in you know The Dark Knight." It's like, no, no that would never happen. I'm feeling so. Let confident. us make it happen. I'm feeling really good. <laughs> I'm feeling so confident. Ah. <laughs> uh, 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 all right. Who would, who would I feel safe as with? My... Mine is CPR trained. Just say. <laughs> <laughs> any 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 last uh, last chances over there, Jimmy? Is that what you're? Nurse Ratchet. <laughs> it is in her name. Two Infinity Stones. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> What do you got? Uh, what do you got, Martin? What I'm do you not, got? I'm not a know yet. Yeah. <laughs> One day this is going to turn into an audience vote. We just can't keep. I'm not going to lie. I I erased and wrote three times already. Wow. It took me three times before I actually made my decision. Um, everybody ready? Are we? I think so. Are we yeah, all I think I'm good. Up I got to do it. All right. On the count of three. One, two, three. I went Mark. I went Martin. I went Martin as well. Mark well, got me with the Infinity Stones. Mark. Mark got me with the Infinity Stones. No, I went Mike. Oh, so Martin takes it. Martin. Ooh. Uncle Tony's. Martin, why did you vote for... Uh, Infinity Stones, man. You, I didn't think you were going to pull that out of your hat, and that was awesome. I'm like, I, you win. I like the Infinity Stones. I looked at Loki for a minute, and I agree with you. I never even thought... I didn't uh, think Infinity you would bring Stone. out the Infinity I never I thought that. Like, I was like, how's he going to argue this? Like, he's, uh, but the that's Infinity okay. Stones Shatter my daughter's dreams, you two. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I voted she for- doesn't love you more than Loki. I voted for you. I voted for you. <laughs> Martin's invited for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> can it be Thanksgiving? <laughs> Thanks killing, you can come over too. <laughs> Yes. No, but I like that. I, I I did it like you. What I like about this debate is I li- I want someone to take me to a place I would never think to imagine because I, I had counter arguments for Loki, but you brought stuff that I didn't even think of counter arguments for, which is what I loved, and I had counter arguments for Thank you. you. So that's, that's why I'm pretty I good it. about my counter arguments. My whole and argument my is a counter argument. <laughs> <laughs> Come uh, on, kids guard. Come on, kids kids. On. Kids. Mar- <laughs> <laughs> kids street over here in the corner. <laughs> Oh, good clap above the head. Mark, why'd you vote for uh, me? Because I, I like the uh, give give the kids the childhood that he never had. <laughs> that right? sold me. And clowns, you know, kids love, well, some kids love clowns. Others find them horribly yeah, terrifying. That, that, that's, that's a, that's a that soft That was button. your best selling point. Yeah. I, yeah, I know. That I, was your best selling he point. He does seem like he's laughing a lot and. There's kids don't know that that's a crazy hysterical <laughs> ma- maniacal laugh. Like, yeah, they, oh, this guy's He's always cheery. Fun. Yeah, like can you imagine putting the Joker into a room of kids who don't know anything about the Joker? They would have fun until you until know, someone gu- dies, until somebody <laughs> dies. or a good gun assembly comes out. Like when it gets real, yeah. you know, those would be. 
And like, I, I mean, I, I, hilarity aside, I know I tried to argue the fact that teaching a child how to take a bomb apart is a thoughtful idea. <laughs> That's where you lost me. Yeah, I no, I like, could Ooh. see. I could see you were like, oh, you, fuck I was like, is. okay, this is, I, I like the elephant. The elephant was cool. I, I yeah. gave you shit for it, but I'm like, that's a cool activity to do with a kid. But then when you're like, oh, bombs and uh, Mac 10s, I'm like, Ooh, I don't think I can send my kid here. <laughs> uh, what? And so just, yeah. I like, you know what? As a kid, I would have loved to be able to destroy shit, like controlled destruction. Though, yes. Right? Yeah. Or like, you know, each of you get to go inside the cannon and launched into yeah, a net, you know, right? Like, like those kinds fun. of things where like, it's, <laughs> Gotta, There's a lot of I circus things that you could take, you know, you the, could the, a lot learning, of themes you could generate the trapeze, from that, right? right? I would have like, started with juggling. And frankly, I don't, I, I don't <laughs> maybe juggling. <laughs> I don't Something want my easy. kid in a padded room. <laughs> yeah. Fine. I mean, and not, I don't feel comfortable with all the guns and drugs and and games. There's no drugs. He's and, retired, man. And, and he's retired, retired you're never man. retired. Retired, man. Yeah, no, he's <laughs> he's right. You're never really out because they pull you back <laughs> in. Retired, man. Jimmy. I went with Martin because I feel like Tony has, well, he definitely has the funds to keep them safe. They're tax-free for me. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a, lot of, a lot of money and walls in that house, I bet. I, I don't know. I was worried uh, that his past would come back to haunt him, but you pretty much swayed me with uh, like that he could pay his way out. He's yeah. got that cash. He's yeah. got that cash flow. Loki's a god. <laughs> <laughs> Puny god. Puny god. But a god nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, <laughs> nobody's going for Mark because he's a god. Yeah. Like, um, I voted for Martin because I really appreciate how much detail you put into looking for it. Like, uh, I... I it's a good writing exercise. I love that. That's why I love doing this show. It's a great writing exercise. It does take your brain into a different place. It, it, what makes you, A, have to be creative, and B, uh, sound it out properly. Um, but I, I do... Except anemones. I did, amenities? I <laughs> couldn't sound that out to save okay. my life. I do this Animals. four times a podcast, buddy. Like, pronunciation, <laughs> fuck it. Or fuck it. Um, so, but the redemption mm-hmm. and trying to make up for a lot of bad things, I like that, too. I thought that was a pretty... Because everybody deserves a second chance. If we're talking, if, if we're getting into society standards right now, once somebody finds something shitty about you, you're fucked. Cancel culture wins every time. So Tony Montana going in the complete opposite direction of a murderous cocaine fueled monster. Cat cat alarms going off. Oh, look at, it's and it's it's always it is, that thing. It honestly is. No, on, there's the first one. Hello, hello, boy. Everybody say hello, boy. I think I think honestly, Martin, you got the vote for Mike because nobody voted for his Ghostbuster restaurant, <laughs> <laughs> and and you went into as much detail about your daycare as he did his restaurant, and he he feels now vindicated for that I did something. <laughs> you spoke to me in a but way yeah. that, that that you spoke yeah. his language. Yes, yeah, yeah. no, you, you painted a picture. The, the kids I, eat this restaurant. Yeah. That, that they then you open eat. up the back <laughs> gate. So <laughs> <there's>, <laughs> you would have if the pe- as long as people ate, I would have voted for the Ghostbuster restaurant as long as they ate. But you're like, no one eats here. I'm like, wait, what's the? Where, this is a restaurant. <laughs> it's the anti restaurant. It's the restaurant that's it's the worst restaurant ever created. Um, cool. All right. Uh, that was fun. That was yeah. That was that was uh, that, that was way more fun than last week's episode. Can't sure. wait for tomorrow's. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy shows up. What are we talking Money. about? Uh, Jimmy, if you come over tomorrow, we're just going to do one just for the fuck of it. Okay? Yay. Yeah. If you literally show up as a joke, we're doing a podcast. I'm, Anytime. Uh, what's What am I doing tomorrow? Um, I, You're hanging out with Aaron. I'm hanging out with Aaron, but I have something during the day. What the fuck do I have? Hanging out with Jimmy Skinner. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Bow, 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 bow. Yeah. A um, couple things before we let everybody go. We were at the Manitoba Podfest 2019 pod, podcast festival. Mm-hmm last week uh september 29th and we got to meet a bunch of really awesome local podcasters in winnipeg we got to learn a couple things about podcasting keeping our microphones x amount of inches away i can't from wait to face. see if this works and makes yeah, it sound better me too so if if you listen to this and you want to let us know if you think it sounds better than we did previously let us know because we're trying out a couple new technical things but we learn to back off them a little bit. Yeah, I want to swallow you it. You got to laugh because yeah. as soon as you're back, like even you, if you're back another three inches, you sound better. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, there's a money spot right there. Yeah. Okay. Right, right in the money spot. I'm, I'm an excitable boy. <laughs> so close. <laughs> I get excited. And in and around your mouth is the money spot. Um, but yes, yeah, so at, at this podcast festival, we did a live recording, and it's our first real talk 
episode technically, hey, Martin? R-E-E-L. R-E-E-L. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Just another play on words. Yeah, I know. We're so fucking punny over here. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed the real talk. Like, that was fun. Right? Yeah. The, yeah. So, yeah, another one coming up with Mark and Martin and me and our buddy BJ. That's the one that you guys can all expect. We're Currently be working with Bob Odenkirk. Currently working cool. with Bob Odenkirk. In yeah, Winnipeg. he's a stuntman. Yep. 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 So, oh, wow. uh, so uh, nobody is the name of the movie filming in Winnipeg. <clears throat> Bob Odenkirk is going to be starring in it. Um, I can't because I work with them directly. I, I honestly, truthfully can't say more than oh, that. That's fine. No one expects you to. Nobody. They haven't even it. gone to camera yet. But um, but BJ's working with Odenkirk doing stunts. So we're going to be interviewing uh, a local Winnipeg stunt man mm-hmm. who's been doing it for like five plus years. Also has his own film company. Has his own film company too. He's going to talk to us about life on set. Um, I got a whole new episode planned with some new cool ideas that are coming down that we're all going to get to try out. But this one, the podcast festival episode, is going to be up also the same week we drop this. So I think it'll be up Tuesday, Wednesday. I'll post are dropping this it. Monday and then yeah, post- cool. oh, Monday and then I'll drop. We'll drop Wednesday. Okay, Monday and Wednesday. So you get two episodes in one week from us. Whew. And you can let us know if you like the real talk ideas. Double your pleasure, double your fun, double, double mint, mint double mint gum. <laughs> <laughs> And you know who has identical twins? The mom from Blood Rage. There we go. Full circle. Full circle. Full circle. Jimmy, I think, I think Jimmy's a part owner in Blood Rage. Yeah. <laughs> he owns the rights to that movie. It's like everyone wants and Blood Rage right now. we're back. Yeah. Bought all the stock in Blood Rage. That's amazing. Uh, so, Martin and Jimmy, do you guys have shows at all you want to plug before we let everybody go? I don't have anything. I just Handsome Daughter and We Johnny's Wednesday, Thursdays. Yeah, anybody who's listening to us, there's always local comedians on. So if this is your first time checking us out, uh, Martin's a local comedian. Jimmy's a local comedian. Chris, uh, Jimmy Skimmer, sorry, Martin Navarro, and Christopher Stanton is also a local comedian. Me and Mark are just naturally think we f- we're funny. Um, you guys make me laugh. We make, mm-hmm. I'm glad. I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah. I like Mark and his puns. Otherwise, this would be the longest hour and a half of your week. Dad joke <laughs> central. <laughs> oh, God. Bad, do- bad joke, dad joke. Hashtag in the corner there. Um, but Hi. yeah, so if you want to check us out and you want to check us out on Instagram, it's the Real Debaters Podcast. Uh, if you want to send us an email, it's the real debaters podcast at gmail.com. I forget Jimmy wants to plug something. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm I, I live I love the sound of my own voice. Plug it. Uh, you Go can ahead. catch me on Andy Noble's Hooray for Jokes on Friday. This is dropping Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be out on Friday. Yeah. Sweet. Check that out. What date? Um, like what actual calendar? October twelfth. October twelfth. Yeah. So Ooh, you got the date be... today. Yeah, yeah I know. Time. I remembered everything just in case I was asked and I was, and I'm super happy about it. Yeah, we it. haven't shown up at four o'clock waiting and hoping that's the night <laughs> yeah. yet, but one day we will. <laughs> yes. Um, um, anything else? Yeah, I'm opening for um, Kate Belton at Gaffer's in Lockport on Ooh. the 16th. So that'll be a lot of fun. She's recording her album on the 17th at the Handsome Daughter. So we're doing a little. Both shows sold out last time? Yeah. So at it's going to be huge. So. so your first thing, that's on the Saturday? <clears throat> yes. Or that's on. Is that Friday? Whatever day the 12th is. That's Saturday. That's Saturday. I know we have problems with Fridays and Saturdays, Jimmy. That's why I'm helping out here. <laughs> it's for sure a Saturday, Mark. <laughs> All right. Saturday the 12th. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have this issue. What time? Uh, Who knows? <laughs> Again, it's full circle. Probably yeah. 9 p.m. All shows that we start yeah. at 9. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for giving us another shot and listening to another episode. Uh, I am Michael Petro. Martin Navarro. Mark Cowell. Jimmy Skinner. And we're out. Whew. Whew. It's a hot one. I'm really